Welcome guys to the MMOs.com podcast. This is episode 80 now, and this is Altai, joined this week by... Omer. Gumbo. Matt. Shirelia. Perfect. Perfect. Full house. And this is the thanks, the post-Thanksgiving, wow. post-Black Friday <laughs> special of the okay. MMOs.com podcast. Every every week is a special podcast, and this week it's... Uh, what, the, what? Did anybody buy anything for Black Friday? Maybe we can get through that real quick. Nope. No. Our consumerism. <laughs> wow. You guys are boring. Gloves. I bought some. I'm broke. Some, some chainmail gloves so what? that I don't what? cut myself while I'm cooking. But did you really buy chainmail gloves? I mean, they're not what? like actually chainmail. They're like oh. it's like cloth with like reinforced. Oh, I've used those before at a restaurant. Metal oh, like if, and shit. If you if you slap somebody with it, is it more effective? Probably. I, I right. Plus two. Plus two strength. Guys, awesome idea. I mostly bought gifts, though. Like, I got the gifts. For... Oh, that's nice. It, it's a good time to buy gifts, because they're cheap, you know? I yeah. didn't think of that. You know, the trick is just to get them gift cards. No, gift cards are the worst gifts. That's no, like no. saying, like, I can't I think get. I get gift cards. No, I like to get people gift I like getting gift cards, too. There you go. There are two types of people in this world. People who like gift cards and people who hate gift cards. No, listen, Everyone's listen, in one camp or the other. If you're going to give gift cards, don't be a douchebag. Just give cash. Give cash money. I always, I only give Exxon Mobil gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're that douche. I get a free oil. I get a free oil change with a hundred dollar gift card. So, uh, I keep that. Oh my god. <laughs> the worst is when people give you a gift card to like some grocery store that you don't even go to. Or, or doesn't? They get you Whole Foods. They get you Whole Foods. You can buy like a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Just one. I'm actually fond of a uh, Red Lobster gift card. <laughs> okay. uh, gift cards are please the don't be that person. Also, before Altai starts trying to get away with giving away Exxon Mobil gift cards about his oil change, Altai doesn't have a driver's license yet, right? So. <laughs> not for don't, one, don't not for want of trying. I failed the test several times so far. He, he failed the test twice. That there... on, that's one of the easiest tests you will take in your life. <laughs> yeah, nice. right? I don't follow the rules, I man. Got, I already got my. my I, I drove like <laughs> shit and I passed the test. So I mean, can you imagine how Airhorn drives them? All right. In my yeah, defense, know, right? in my defense, my test instructor, or whatever, was was a woman both times. I failed. Yeah, good defense. Models. What does that mean? <laughs> you still failed the test. You still derped. No, 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 I want to uh, read this comment that someone just made. Al Alinius, Altai would get a driving driver's license if he was driving in two D. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Before we get too off subject, uh, yeah. I want to throw it to Gummy. But before I do that, I, for my Black Friday shopping, I did buy a PS4. It was fifteen percent off on Target, so I was able to get that oh, sick nice. deal. And I'm eager to play one, two games: Final Fantasy XV and Persona Five. That's the only reason I brought, a, bought a PS4. Oh wow! And pro possibly the Last Guardian. But yeah, I'm eager to play that as soon as I get back to Vegas. <laughs> Unless anyone else has anything to say, we're going to throw it to Gumby uh, for the weekly raid. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I got something hold to up. say. Uh, I tried to right. buy a new 3DS, okay? They had a sale, a special model, $100. Was it the $100 yes. one with no charger? Yes. But here's the problem. They released it a day before they said it was going to release. So guess what? It was instantly sold out, and I couldn't get it. Bullshit. Oh, that sucks. Wait, why did they release it? The day before they said they would. That seems kind of random. To help the eBay sellers. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, everyone just yeah. everyone just flipping it. So from yeah, so now, so now everyone who bought it is just reselling it for like fifty, sixty dollars more, which is. You, you know, uh, Toys R Us right now is selling the 3DS XL for uh, one seventy five. So it's 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 more, but it's the XL version. Yeah, but that's a lot more than a hundred. But yeah, but I yeah, appreciate it. I'll I'll take a look later. But it's the All right. XL. 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 Oh, okay. I, I got my XL, by the way. I bought another one. I got it. <coughs> got the Fire Emblem edition. Whoa. Yep. Well, so this is I... actually... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 don't take it away. I just... Cause it's because my mom wanted to play Pokemon, so I gave her my old DS. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Did, did you see the Pokemon she tried to she tried to give me? Did you guys see that <laughs> shit? Yeah, I did. I don't know. If, I, I don't think you sent it to them. Yeah, yeah I'll post it. <laughs> In the, the thing, jeez, dude, it, it is like why? All right, look at this. So so pretty much like she she was like, oh, I have really shitty Pokemon. I was like, don't worry, I'll give you some, right? And then 
she throws me this trade. Rat and... that Ratatouille? Well, look at what she named it, though. Like... Spooky Boogie. <laughs> no, no, that's mine. Rat Boy, Rat Boy. Rat Boy. Rat Boy oh. with like an ah. I instead of a Y. <laughs> it's like the worst. Your mom's hipper oh, than I am. I feel like there's two kinds of All people. Right. Uh, those who yes. rename their Pokemon and those who don't. I yes. have never renamed a Pokemon. I, I have no respect like for people that. I have no respect for people okay. that. Okay. I, I, I rename their Pokemon. Oh, sorry, Shu. Sorry, Shu. So I, I rename Pokemon that I'm going to trade, and the reason <laughs> I do that is because Cat explains that it's probably a good idea to do it, so they get a little something when I send them like a Ratatata and like return for like a Lapras or something. <laughs> I just like um. <laughs> I used to not name them. But I started naming them because it, it feels a little bit more like they're not just some rando one. It's like my my Pokemon, you know? Yeah. I got nothing against it. I just oh. I just personally don't do it. The, hold on, hold on. So question of character. Do you do you rename the protagonist in your JRPGs or do you go the default name? Uh I well, I haven't played a JRPG in a while that like actually lets you rename it, but I usually name them after my friends. I always name everything Guy Daddy. Uh, so the NPCs when they're talking, they're like, "Yes, Daddy, anything you say." <laughs> right, also, right, I also made myself name Daddy on my iPhone. So when Siri's talking to me, it's like, all "Yes, right. Daddy, come." Wait, today's up. podcast. Today's podcast is full of digressions. We're just gonna okay, let's go. I got a good. I got a good naming story though. Uh, oh my God! Go have at it. All right, th there's this game. Um, like this, uh, this squad-based game for a PS4, and uh, Loki named his squad like the like his his uh, mercenary group, the Faggots. And like every time, like the enemies there, it's like it's the Faggots, get them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty childish, but I approve. I approve. <laughs> All right, before we get too off the wagon, Gumby, just take it. I think we I think we're take off the wagon, but. Seeing as how we were talking a lot about trading and economics, this week we're talking about something we've talked about briefly before, at least, and that's player-run shops. What the hell happened to player-run shops? You don't see them anymore. In older games, you would walk around, maybe Ultima Online, Ragnarok, and you would see tons of AFK players selling their goods. But now it seems like they've disappeared from most games. I think I saw some in Revelation Online, and I'm wondering what happened. Uh, other games also, they're economies they limit how much interaction there is between players we've talked about that before too uh, a lot of games really don't let you trade much or the trading you can do it's for limited items some materials uh, rather than being able to trade so like a sword you find in a dungeon which is almost mm -hmm. always buy them pick up and i i think that i think that that's done more harm than good and i really don't know what the good is so i'm curious about the round table and our audience's opinion i think gumby is making the the keynesian economical argument see when you have an auction house system it puts a lot of a lot of work see when everyone's running player shops it creates more employment in the mmo all right and then we reach full employment all right thank you <laughs> Did, good analysis didn't we talk about this? i feel like we talked about this we talked about it briefly before, before, before but this week we turned it into a raid so we're gonna oh, we're gonna get to the bottom of the mystery okay here's my here's all my right, take on mystery, it Go ahead. It's it's not ideal that now we moved to um, auction houses, but I think we had to, because a lot of what you guys are remembering is nostalgic player interaction was actually just misinformation. Uh, 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 what's his word here? Uh, imbalance. Not in, realizing there was something better. You know, an, an imbalance in information that was being exploited by veterans. So, for example. In Fly for Fun, I would sit in newbie zones and offer to buy the dice that dropped from new players for like a thousand currency, which was useless. But the dice was worth millions, but they didn't know that. It wasn't worth millions, but it was worth a in lot. In Maple Story, I remember sitting in like newbie zones buying ores and rare drops from people. I'm just spamming it, literally manually, like man, just spamming and buying because they didn't know what it was worth, right? And I would just turn around and sell it for more. Um, so you had a lot of that in those kind of games. I, I remember Omar Alt uh, in Rose Online, right? You would just intentionally set up a, cash, a, a shop somewhere, a stall. And have everything. Yep. You know, you can, in that game you could buy as an you can buy as an AFK, and you set your own prices. So you'd set everything to one. So you'd buy all their loot for one, and in the morning you'd wake up and sell it for a lot more than one, right? Yeah. You actually sell to that PC too, and you actually name your shop whatever you want. So I'd name my shop like buying all drops, paying highest prices paid. And people see that on top of my character <laughs> name, and they assume I was paying the highest prices, and they go like some of their stack of loot. Like 70 drops and sells for exactly 70. I guess they didn't even look at it. And you just get that loot and sell to that PC for like 100 per. And you make 100 like What's times the profit. Well, the, the problem with that is... I agree. What's the problem? New players are being ripped off because they don't know the, 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 the prices. So they better wise up then. 
Do, do you guys remember, like, back in the day, they, well, they'd have uh, people price checking in all chat? Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Was good. PC, PC, like, this <laughs> Yeah. I think there's another issue, though, that game designers were probably more, like, worried about. Okay, so an auction house is 100% uptime. When you're selling yeah. something, it is always there until it's sold. Mm -hmm. But these player-run shops do not have 100% uptime. And I think yeah. that was what they were looking at. I think it purely had to do with how much time it was there. And, like, instead of having to go, like, remember in older games when you'd go into town, like, almost all of them, you'd go into town and there would be, like, so many chat bubbles with what these people were buying and selling that you literally couldn't see the buildings or the floor depending on the game's view. Yeah. You couldn't see anything. Like right? Okay. Well, when you have to go through each and every one of those to try and find the item you want and you can't search... You can't search every ones. You have to go to each individual one, even if it has even if it had a search feature. It's just frustrating. It takes ages, and I think a lot. And I mean, we're not talking about us, right? Because mm -hmm. we're hardcore gamers. We, we've played a lot. We'll we'll look past a few of these things, you know. And some of us even enjoy these things. But the average person is going to get pissed off having to yeah, go I through think, all that stuff. I think you nailed it with with clutter, because I remember I remember how much clutter it was, and it, it was impossible to navigate. So I I, I could see that being a, a big factor. So um, I, I have an interesting experience that I think counters what you're saying. Go ahead. Um, have, yeah, have you guys played Mabinogi? Yep. So in Mabinogi, there's two ways you can buy stuff. One is there's uh, player-owned housing shops. So it's like an actual building that's a shop. And uh, those ones you can search. <laughs> it's kind of like an auction house in the sense that if you own a shop in an area, you can fill it with stuff, and then people can search through all of the housing for certain items they want to buy right so you can check the prices there right mm -hmm. but also certain districts in the game had player shops there was like two i believe there was uh one in the second town and then there was one in like a further town and the one in the further town was like the rich mall <laughs> that's where everybody mm -hmm. would sell expensive stuff and um because you would have to buy a license and these licenses would allow you to sell x amount of gold worth of items right so mm -hmm. the, the rich one, you had a higher limit. So, and it was confined to like small market areas. So then like, sure, those areas were like full of bubbles and, sh and shops, but then everywhere else didn't have that. You had to set up in very specific areas. And yeah. one experience that that has really brought to me that I really enjoyed was just window shopping. It was really fun in, in Mabinoki. Yeah. Like every day I'd wake up and like I'd hit the market and just like, oh, I just browse what people have for sale today, you know? And there's so many items in the game that like, you know, so many cosmetics, like all the different dye colors and stuff. <laughs> it's really fun to just walk through it and like look through everything that, that um, is for you sale. Really, you really lose that feeling window shopping when, when they get rid of that. Because I know that Ultima Online has stuff like that. And even yeah. like Maple Story, just going to the free market where you, that feeling of you walk to the free market and like you're like, okay, I got to make some money. You know, I need like, I need to make like 2 million mesos for the shit I want. You go in there and you try hustling, you know, yeah. buying from one guy, flipping to another guy and like trying to see what the deals are that day. For both buyer and seller, there is information mismatch and some of this pricing isn't perfect, but it creates opportunities for everyone to like seize that moment and like try to make a deal happen where it's not as common. The experience is lost in the auction house. It's not just about player interaction. It just experiences. Okay, but again, the average person doesn't want to do that. The average person wants the quickest route, and the quickest route is to walk up to an auction house person, do your search, buy your thing, and leave. And so, so when the know. average person do is using the auction house all the time, that leaves like no population for areas like that. And so, do you think maybe I, there's a happy medium though? That's just what I'm two? saying. Is is that's why I think uh, Mabinogi had a good medium because you could you could search through the plays player like the actual like shops that people like set up mm -hmm. um those were permanent not really permanent but they were like shops that like existed in a building in the game um those ones you could you could search through but like player oh, it was like a bazaar right it wasn't it wasn't even like a shop it was like a person with like a carpet on the floor with like all their shit on it you, you know like a mm -hmm. like a yeah. like a farmer's market type of a thing and and that's mm -hmm. you know but you have both there right and you have like those experiences yeah right? what you just described with the mabinogi it's way better than i think i think the way ultima online did it and the way um maple story did it or ragnarok did it and i think i think but, a similar system was used in my personal oh i guess we can do a round table what what game in your opinion had the best kind of like player shop okay. uh i'll go first i'll say neopets 
because it combined a few things. One, you could search an item by the name and it would list by price. So to, to, if you have the exact item name, the cheapest will come first. You can, and then you can't just buy it from that list though. You got to actually click into their store and you see everything they have for sale. So you, they might grab you with like something cheap and then you browse, you find something else to buy it, right? But here's the thing about uh, Neopets. Not everything could be listed in your store because there was, a, there was a, a limit in how expensive of an item you could list in your personal store. Things that were rare and super expensive, you couldn't list in your store. You had to go to the, this trading house area, a separate place where you didn't have like a permanent store. You just, you just offered trades. So it kind of mixed the bartering with uh, an easily searchable basic necessities uh, you know, auction house, basically, that newbies can just not get ripped off with. There you go. Who's All next? right, I remember. I mean, Neobed wasn't perfect, but I, I, I see, I see the benefit there of being able to browse. I'm saying shop. the player, the player run shop aspect of Neopets. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like I, I'm, I'm probably really biased because I'm the type of player that really loves that thing. Like I love crafting, gathering. That's like my thing. Like I like that way more than I like <laughs> combat. So that's why, like, that's super important to me. Because you know, if you're fighting, you meet people through dungeons and stuff, right? Like. The way I like to meet people is like through trade. Like I, I made a lot of friends, like you know, buying and selling goods in in different games or crafting goods and selling it to people, and that's why that's important to me, Matt. But, um, I, but I can see your point though that it's not important to a lot of people. I'm gonna take the flip side. All right, I'm gonna say the worst game, the the worst trading system, Diablo and Diablo Two. All right, you had the the, the classic trading system in that game was okay. You you create a server called the Trading House, all right, and then people come in. And you just open a trade window and you say what well, we'll through them, which is what you got. You just you just drop all your rares in the trade window, and he drops all his rares, and you see if you have any items that like you want to trade. Because the currency in that game was shit, like it was gold. It was it was literally had no value, so you would never be able to trade currency for an item that you want. You had to have a, you had to have an item that he wanted, and it made trading impossible. There was no way to search items anywhere, and then because everyone had such limited inventory space, everybody had, like ten different mule accounts. That game had the worst trading. I nominate that for the worst trading. But beyond that. I don't know which one I like best because uh, for me, Ultima Online, because I played the shit out of that game and I, I still enjoy the window shopping aspect. I want to know what Matt has to say for like best. Trailer. I haven't really thought about it. I just do whatever I have to in most games. I just know that I don't like having to go through th hundreds of player shops anymore. It's just at this point in time, if I have to spend an hour in town going through people's shops, it's just too aggravating. Yeah, I don't think I've played a game that um, I could say is my best because I also haven't given it enough thought. But I, I would like to see something that blends the two. I would like to see something that blends the two without having player-run shops clutter the environment. Something like there's pre-made shops and you can only rent them for a certain amount of time or something. And then you sell your items and once you're out, you're out. Or like something along the lines of you have to join a guild and maybe it's a merchant guild and then you can sell stuff through them. And also have an auction house. I think there's something charming about player like that direct player to player interaction uh even when it comes down to afk shopping um but i, I don't i can't think of a game that's done i didn't play mad Minogi, so i can't really speak to that all right do you, do, do you think there's something magical in entering a zone and you just see like all these players just no just no trying to trade well okay there's a ragnarok I, online I private server that did it right though because instead of having everyone in frontera having their little signpost up they had a special area where people could trade and mm -hmm. it was set up so that you had to stand on the side of the road so it wasn't cluttered. And I thought that was a better system because when the little bubbles popped over their heads, it was mm -hmm. neatly layered so you could read each one and not feel like you're lost in a mess. There, it is fun, though. It's fun to see. Because when you see stuff like that, too, like an auction house, right? An auction house kind of hides the economy. You don't see it to mm -hmm. open that menu. But when you see active traders in some type of specialized zone or whatever, it shows you that there are people invested enough in the game. Yeah to try and you know share their goods. And the thing too, we didn't talk about this, but my main problem with the way modern games do it isn't even the systems they use, they use, it's just the limitations on what items can be traded or sold. I think that, that's maybe a different question and a different topic. And we've I think we've had that conversation before too, about buying and pick up. How much mm -hmm. of the, for those of you who like this, the, the physical shops or the player stalls, let's say, how mm -hmm. much of it for you is an aesthetic visual thing, like with the you know, feeling like it's active? Because I think Black Desert Online, yeah, it's, I know, it kind of has like basically no trading, right? For, yeah. Okay. But uh, for, for, for whatever reason, to me, the towns and cities felt alive because of all the NPCs Absolutely. walking around. 
Uh, I compare that to, for example, Riders of Icarus, right? When you go to that capital city, it's huge. The structures look imposing and cool. But when you actually get down, you know, on the floor, it's it's just like a ghost town, right? There's like yeah, nothing going on. It's depressing. So, but in Black Desert, I think they did a great job. You know, I always felt like the world was alive. And I think for a lot of people uh, with nostalgia, the trader cards are not so important because they were actually using those trader cards. But like you guys said, the seeing it, seeing activities. Yeah, seeing, you might be right about that. I think I think the psychology of the aesthetics is more to do uh, than the actually using those trader shops. I, I don't know. I mean, I always thought the trader shops, I always thought of them in the same way that I thought of bots. Like, sure, there's someone logged in there, right? But they're not actually doing anything. Sure. You know, and I, I've always, I, I, I don't know, the more people I saw there, that was the less people that were actually playing the game. And that was an iffy sign to me. I was thinking about. Well, but here's the thing: but there are even games like Maple Story. They weren't AFK because they, they they were they were literally standing there typing and spamming their message. No, manually. there are a lot of games where they were no, AFK. You know, I, they I, I know. I know. The player stalls are typically AFK. No, the player stalls are typically AFK. Maple Story Free Market was active selling though. No, so no they, they had, had to stalls too. Stand there. Yeah, but you had to pay cash money to do that. And I've never shopped in those stores because you you know why would you when. Uh, the Maple Story was it was the, it was the it was the craziness of the free market where the deals get struck. All right, that's for it's like the, it's like the New York Stock finest. Exchange, you know. Of, of yes, the, the capitalism is finest. Before it's computers, really... yeah, before computers, yeah. like nineteen twenty stock the exchange. Golden era of Maple capitalism and Maple Story, right? Always comes Dude, back the, to me. Like the rush that you get from those things are, is insane. It's like yeah. like like when I when I when I used to play in Mabino, get sit in the market and then like somebody would be like selling this item and it's like mm -hmm. a really really rare item that like people rarely like it, it you never mm -hmm. get it right it's like a once in a like two week type of a thing right mm -hmm. and this item comes up and you're just like holy shit you like immediately message them you're like how much like yeah. how, what's your other offers like keep me posted mm -hmm. like here's my bid and then like yep. it's just this constant like you know contacting people and like trying to like okay so it's like oh I need a little bit more money now. Like, let me borrow it from some people. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's insane. No, no the the best part is like, you like listen. I'll give you the I'll give you the fifty million and I'll give you this rare axe, right? I should try bartering with them, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, because was, you ran out of yeah. you ran out of hard cash, right? You see yeah, I mean? so like, you give another different item and like it creates an atmosphere. Where he trades that axe for something else, and it, it's, yeah, it, it's fun. It, it creates even more than that because it's like. Now that this market, not not sorry, this now that this item is on the market, everyone starts to sell off of their off their shit. All the commodities just flood the market now yep. because everyone needs hard cash, right? So yep. now, so now, like like, do you like now you're thinking to yourself like, do I do I still go for that item or do I turn around, buy the shit from those people, hold on to that, and then sell that later? You know, it's it's mm -hmm. oh man, it's it's just it's such a rush, and I haven't gotten that in so, in so long in a game. Actually, there's one game we haven't really discussed that kind of does this pretty magnificently, and that's EVE Online, mm -hmm. where uh, you basically you have newbie players or people who don't care. Uh, they'll pay a little extra for an item if it's at their station or nearby, uh, and, and it, everything is for sale by players, basically. Mm -hmm. So people can make a little bit of profit by moving things between stations, like, you know, haulers. And then that way, yeah, kind of both sides are benefit because, you know, people... Any 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 profit that's on the table, if it's big enough, somebody will um, fill that in and grab that profit. Mm -hmm. So, but what so you guys are saying, where it's physical haggling, like you just like going back and forth. Yeah, those days are over because I think I agree. They're over, they're over. I agree. Because it's being nostalgic. That's a that's a negative sum game because people with information are only going to rip people off without information. New players, right? And a new player who just wants to come to town, like Matt was saying, if I just want to go to town. I want to buy my level 20 sword, right? Let's say. I don't want to spend two hours dealing with, you know, people like you who have, like, who hoarded eight of them and are going to rip me off for it, okay? I just want to go in, buy my goddamn sword, and get out, okay? Like, I don't want to deal with this, like... <laughs> That's fair, that's fair. This, you know, always me noise. And the, the other thing to take into consideration is that the people that need these basic items, whenever there's an NPC shop that has it for a certain price... The player shops are always going to be like a little bit higher than the NPC shop because they want the extra money because that's the market value and they want more than the market value. Mm -hmm. And it, it literally just obscures the entry process. I mean, it's fine for end game, sure. But mm -hmm. like when you're when you're at the beginning, it just obscures your way through the levels and makes it harder for you by making it seem like you have to pay more for something that you don't. All right, guys, I have a. Uh... I have an idea. All right, I was thinking before this podcast started about a good crafting system, and I I thought of a magnum opus. All right, you got magnus opus. Is it magnum opus or magnus opus? Mag magnum opus. Magnum. 
We'll, 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 we'll just call it an opus, all right? <laughs> I have an no, idea. You're not, you're not using it correctly regardless, but go ahead. I, listen, listen. You don't know me. Let me finish. Let me finish. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen, crafting system and then more PG. And I, my, my ideal crafting system, I feel like this is a really good system, all right? All right. Think an traditional and more PG, but with Terraria like crafting, where literally every drop can be turned into something <laughs> useful. So when you kill the pigs, you're not just getting shit, all right? You can just craft it into some armor, some weapon. And, and even like, you can even upgrade your low tier goods into higher tier goods at like an, an, an efficient level. So you can always get loot that's being able to be converted to either. And it doesn't make sense. Like a pig and drop something that, that may not be like a like pigtail. If you combine it with like these two other like pig loot, you can make a piece of armor with it. All right. It, it doesn't that. make sense. But my point is a system where you can just, and, and the thing is everyone can craft. It's got a system, simple Terraria like crafting menu. That's also, I think, available in a game like Hero Song now, where you can just turn anything into something useful. And this system carries throughout the entire game. And bosses and stuff, no enemy drops swords or gear or loot they only drop like fragments and items that can be used to craft stuff and again crafting is not like a skill it can literally be accessed by anyone and all the recipes are already available there so you, you can always mix and match what you want and if a boss like a rare boss I mean, like a raid drops like a, like a special gem you can use that for every class because whoever gets that loot can make some epic piece of gear for their class with it what do you guys think from, so, from, I, from beginning I, to end, okay. Well, always. I dislike all, a lot of that. First of all, it's not Terraria because Terraria you get drops, like like equipment drops. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. Well, I, I, and I, second I off, menu. like Terraria menu. Okay, just because you can make something doesn't mean it's always going to be useful for your you, level. You, yeah, but that doesn't mean it's going to be useful later, and you still might get the same. Ah, it, it seems like not thought out. No, like, whoa, no, cool. No, 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 the same drops you get later, you can you can upgrade the higher tier crafting loot. But you can buy three pigtails. It turns like one tier higher, like almost like the gem system in Diablo, where you get you can buy three lower tier gems. You get one higher tier gem, and you that seems like lower tier. Okay, th this sounds exactly like what Echo of Soul did with the gem system. Okay, so Echo of Soul, you can slot gems and gear, right? Okay. And every, like they had several different colors of gem, and okay. you'd think, okay, this is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Until you have five different stacks of the same color gem as you're trying to upgrade them to higher tier gems mm -hmm. and they take up your entire inventory. So this seems rife with like what Sean hates about MMOs with the limited inventory space and trying I to do. force you to buy oh, give players more inventory, inventory, inventory like... space. Problem fixed. What? Or near it for giving like, crazy amounts of inventory Doesn't that space. break Problem immersion? Fixed. No. No? Any game that, that limits your inventory space is annoying. That was a and confident like... no. <laughs> that was a very confident How no. How does that not no, break you, immersion? You players extra bags. Problem fixed. So let's not derail the topic. That's another topic. Listen, 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 you don't see a value in being able to just turn every piece of loot into something useful. Basically, no. essentially, everything's giving you like powder, and you can just turn a powder into gear for your whatever you oh, okay, want. Okay, but but the other side of this is you're telling me that I have to pay attention to every single item in the game and make sure that I don't need every single item so you, in you the do game. Need, every item that drops will benefit you. Literally, every item will benefit every that character. That sounds like too much micromanagement. No. Yeah, I think there's the right way to go about it, but it shouldn't be like um, right. a necessary thing to have to pay attention to every item. Maybe it's like a, a peripheral thing for someone who wants to engage in that aspect of gameplay rather than saying that's ne because, like Matt's saying, like imagine if it was all because the way you're putting it is that it's all necessary, right? Maybe all useful. And everything is, a is way useful to go about it. Everything like maybe it doesn't all. It's not all about like character. Maybe like you can turn a, a, a you don't need hide you don't into need uh, a into a yeah. carpet for your house. You know. Maybe not everything is is used. Okay, better, better, you. better, better, right. better, better, okay, better okay. look at it. Every every enemy you kill drops like let's just say like powder. Literally everything is used as powder, and powder is used to craft. What are they all like that way. In this game? I don't know. This sounds it it, it 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 sounds like it just breaks immersion. It's a sense. It solves a lot of issues of of garbage trash loot, and makes like everything useful. Like, you know what I, else I solves the loot. issue of garbage trash loot? Don't drop what? garbage trash yeah, loot. Yeah, but in some games, the trash. there, there are some games that don't drop garbage trash loot. Everything is either a crafting item or gear. I mean, it's just that's an easier but, but, but way to do it. Here's the thing: it. when you say it's a crafting gear, right? Let's let's real talk right now, okay? You playing Guild Wars two? You you find a crafting item, right? You're not gonna do shit with it. You're not gonna craft it. You're gonna sell it or just trash it, right? So whatever. Most no, you sell the auction house. So it's in Guild Wars two. And imagine the other thing. Okay, so the other thing you're not thinking about, like. Let's take Sean's example. You have a wolf hide, and you can turn it into a carpet for your like house or something, right? Mm -hmm. 
that is not going to be useful endlessly. Like, eventually you're going to hit a point where these items literally mean nothing to you because you've done everything you can with them. No, but those items can upgrade. Like I said, you can combine to lower... Okay, but then you upgrade it to a they, certain point, and then you don't need them anymore. No, no, you... No, 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 what are you talking about? You, there will literally be gear that you will never have. You, just, you can keep upgrading your gear and be able to craft new gear that's unobtainable. It will. It's such a simple design where you can make it so you'll never have everything, and there's always something to strive towards, simply by being able to upgrade it constantly. So you can always grind to get loot and then upgrade it to better crafting materials to craft better armor and upgrading you know your current armor too, and weapons. Listen, listen. Hey, what you're saying, this, this right, right, what you're explaining is first of all nothing new. Okay, it's a very uh, you know, the problem is what, what game is doing. What Eva, game is doing? What, what you're explaining is the definition of power creep. It is the definition Why? of power. creep. Everything can just be recycled rough. into ore, and then ore can be made into whatever. If you yeah, can... everyone can make ore to whatever. No, you don't have to go to a crafter. You don't have to do some weird training okay. crafting skill. Everyone can do it. Just like you can craft. And so from the beginning in Terraria, you can just craft everything. Yes, no, yes, you can't. You yes. need like the, you need the, you need like no, the no, no, equipment. No. Okay, I I'm talking about that menu. Okay, there's no recipes needed. So I'm talking about that menu that we could just click your character sheet and you can save everything craft uh, on the left side. So you can do it like that. So the whole, so there's a thousand a level one, a thousand of things are right there. Yeah, but it's obviously scaled at level one gear and it's easily organized by like uh, tabs, you know, searchable. Okay, but you need there, discovery my, in my games somewhere. Was, my, my point, my point was if you can sit there and you can keep upgrading and upgrading, upgrading endlessly, at some but point, no level you're, okay, but at some point you are upgrading procedurally. Like you're not putting in numbers manually for every one of the single one of these infinite things. So... Well, you're, when I say you, upgrading, I don't mean like giving plus one to your gear. I mean literally just changing your gear to something else. So that's not upgrading. Plus. You're upgrading your gear. You're you're changing gear. I'm that's not, not upgrading. Plus, Speaking of changing up, gear, plus 10. I think it's time we change gear in this conversation. Right, let's change gear on this, but I think I think I think. Whoa, I this think guy with the transitions has a good overarching. Listen, whatever. All right, at some ahead. point, you need you need things like recipes. Yeah, you just put the to give a listen, sense listen, of progression listen, listen, and mystery. I, I want thumbs up, thumbs down for my idea. All right, let's, let's bring this down to thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down. Down. I give myself a thumbs up. Down. Come on, somebody. Down. I, I can't. Me. I'm sorry. Down. Come Save me. <laughs> <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's, it's I, four like, to one. I like half of what you're It's four to one, bro. You're done. And you're I done, bro. All right, all right, all right. We got that. We got that. Let's Speaking, look. I'm, I'm, I'm... Speaking of one... I don't think anyone said one, but Black Desert Online is uh, is doing their little server merger. So they're going to have oh, yeah. a single server for North America and a single server for Europe. What happened? Okay. Like people quit? No, no, no. This was um, no. this was announced from the beginning. Apparently, mm -hmm. they were going to move to a mega server idea. And despite it being announced from the beginning, and despite the fact that it's cool to have one server, right? Like everyone's on one mm -hmm. server. There are still people uh, complaining. Uh, Why? On the forums, I don't know. They find anything to complain about. Apparently, your warehouse storage is getting combined. Uh, you have 192 slots apparently, but for some people, that's not enough. So they have like a couple days. Well, now they have one day left to you know deal with that. But I mean, who who plays enough characters on multiple servers on the same region to deal with that? I don't know. Uh, it's no big deal. <laughs> the people complaining in the forums. Yeah, I especially guess. in Black Desert where you have to grind endlessly to get your characters up to the. PvP competitive level. They, they really like the grind, I guess. I think it's a good system, though. I mean, who doesn't like mega servers? And the fact that they announced this early on, and people, and the fact that people did say, oh, the game must be dying, right? There's one, they have the server merging already. But again, this was announced like pretty early on that this was going to happen anyway, and that the whole server thing is only temporary anyway. But I think there's, there's really nothing to complain about. This is ideal. I mean, we talk a lot about server infrastructure and what we want in games. I think we all agree that. We'd rather be able to play with friends easily. And we have different mm -hmm. ways of doing that, whether it's channels or one mega server. But I think we all agree that from, from my character, I should have to play with any of my friends. Like nobody's gonna be like, no, we have to segment the player base. No, this is just better to, to screw everybody like that. Like it's a good system and I want to see more games do it. And also it should be noted that um they also and when they announced that they were doing this on the 30th or whenever, they said mm -hmm. that um Part of it was going to be it's going to help stimulate the economy and it's going to help with territory wars, like node wars. It's going mm -hmm. to help um, really bring everything together in one place. 
All right, and they were actually, listen, listen, another minor gem I'm going to say, BDO, possibly free to play. The game was five bucks on Black Friday, all right? Five bucks. Between, come on. We're going to, we're going to five bucks on sale. Next, next sale is zero dollars, all right? Wait for it. What, what is, uh, what I, is it I now? I think they're going to. After Black Friday. Five bucks, I think. It's still five bucks? I, I think. I think so, until 28th. No, no, it's 29th now, so no. It's, the sale is over. Yeah, it's only $10. Think... Sorry, Matt. Go ahead, Matt. Just take it. I, I, guess it's I think they're going to drag it out as long as they can. If they wanted to go free-to-play, they would have gone free-to-play because it's free-to-play in every other region, and the reason that it wasn't free-to-play here is because that's what they thought that um, Americans wanted, and then they, uh, or the West wanted, I should say, and then they went and changed the business model. So a lot of people were mad about it, but I think they're going to drag it out. Oh, they will. They, and they want to make as much money as possible. I think from the get-go. I mean, I, I understood why they made it buy to play. They want to make as much money as possible, but I still maintain that. I, I don't I don't remember. We, we never wrote down exactly when I said to go free to play. I just know I said it within a year at some I, point I in love, the past. I love so, Amar's within a year. So basically, whenever we ask him and he answers within a year, <laughs> it refreshes. Like, it's another 12 months now. <laughs> so like, yeah. So if we start talking about is, Overwatch is again today, it's going to be like, yeah, Overwatch going to go free within a year. <laughs> within 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I am. I'm making it official, guys. Guys, we're making it official. All right. I'm gonna say it's gonna go free to play in five months because we're, we're gonna say it's been seven months. I think it's been less. Actually, no, it's definitely been less. Say six months, it's been right? More. Th- when did BDO even come out? February. It's been nine months. All right. We're gonna say we're gonna say. In, I say five months. I'm gonna say you, within five months within as year. of this. Yeah, I said within a year, like like four months ago. You right? said within a year, a year ago. So no, I didn't. I, I didn't long? see it. Oh, you wrote an article called Black Desert Online should go free to play. That's what I'm marking that. down. You're free to play. <laughs> you wrote that article. Let me that find was before it. Before the game came out. That's before the game came out. Article. Hold on. Exactly. Within a year. Hold on. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. All right. Anyway, I said, fine. We'll say four. I'll say four months. Give me four months. I say four months. I'm good. And that's, yeah. I'm not negotiating any further. Four months. You're only negotiating with yourself. <laughs> I'm negotiating. I'm says. BDO FTP four months from November 29, 2016. Okay, I got four months, and that's that's my, that's we're sticking by it. No, so we we said it in a previous podcast, and we're never gonna go back and check exactly when I said it. So we're gonna say four months. All right, and when I win, I demand. I wanna I wanna let our audience know that the bets that actually count get written down in an Excel document. And this one is not getting written down. So I I, I wrote it down the Excel document. Oh, uh, this one doesn't count. It's not a bet this. though. Okay, who wants? Does anyone want to take me up on this? I say four months. Is I don't care. So you say in four months, Black Desert Online will be free to play. Yes. I say no. Okay, I'll take that bet. Okay, I'll take taking me up on that bet. I will bet you five dollars. I'm putting it down. How about, right? how about a red lobster I'll dinner? Say. Fine, red lobster dinner. That's a terrible thing to wager. I don't even want to go to red lobster. <laughs> red lobster blows. Can we just go there and get the biscuits and leave? <laughs> You can, you can there? buy them. You can buy the biscuits at the store. But the, I gotta make it myself then. I want to. I want to be. I want to craft it for oh me. Oh my the, god! Oh my from god. the master chefs at Red Lobster. <laughs> master <laughs> chefs. Chefs. <laughs> All right, we got it. it it's I'm officially out. written down. October 2015. Oh, well, how about a buffet? How about a buffet? How about a buffet? Uh, landslide article. Fine, fine, okay. fine. All right, Red, I'm pass. leaving. I'm leaving Red Lobster dinner on there for funsies. All right, but within within four months, it's gonna happen. All right, you got the Remo guarantee. The Remo guarantee has never let anyone down. All right, not even once. I'd love for some. Okay. Anyway, right, back we'll back see. to back to the news. Back to back to the server merger. Back to good stuff. Back one to good one. Stuff. Okay. Right, one go. issue I have with the merger. Okay. There's gonna be channels. Obviously, there's channels now, which is fine. Yeah. I get it. But there's gonna be 36 channels on this one server. Holy shit. That's too many. That's too many. Let's do it. I guess that just shows you though how big the player base is. I, I, I can work with 12. 36 channels. That's like MapleStory uh, level No, channel. even MapleStory has more than, I mean, a fewer than 36 channels. Well, they, per, uh, all right. Per server. Yeah, I think it's less. I think it's less. But it is a lot of servers. Ser- channels. Yeah. Channels. Yeah. Channels. Let's work that down. Dom Games, come on. You can do it. Let's work that down. Step it down. Feel <laughs> I feel like it should be based on how many. I missed. Matt, Figure out a Matt programmatic way to bring on channels. All right. Uh, I think more importantly, though, I mean, I, I think we all support one mega server. I mean, who? Thumbs up for that, guys. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hundred yeah. percent thumbs up. I'm gonna say. I, think it. Mo- I don't feel like doing it. I think the most interesting uh, news this week, and potentially not the most interesting, but thing that I'm actually a little bit hyped about, 
is that Lineage Eternal uh, may already be in English. I know Matt wrote the article, so you want to take that, Matt? It's pretty simple. Uh, there was, um, there's this Russian forum, and since the beta Russian. starts tomorrow, right? The beta starts tomorrow, and the client was available for pre-download, mm -hmm. and people on this Russian forum were going through and uh, data mining the client based on what they could get out of like data files and stuff. Mm -hmm. And according to them, upwards of half of the game might be translated already. Guys, we're going to get a simultaneous launch. Remember, they they, they said they there was rumors they 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 would do a simultaneous global launch, and not even rumors. Okay, it was a uh, like vaguely confirmed that they're going to do a simultaneous global launch for, it was the, a full, rumor. for the full game. Listen, we went over this thing two weeks ago. I think it was the official headline from some random website was NGSoft says that's going to happen. Uh, they didn't official put a source, headline right? for a random website sounds it, wasn't, very... it was like the guardian it was like a real newspaper right it was like the bbc or something something legit right it wasn't something like like mmos.com right it was something legit <laughs> right so i trusted it i trusted it well i mean this game and has been in development for possible. how long now so it's, it's they should forever. have uh english you know translation in there yeah forever so I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping to actually be able to get my hands on it also that was two years ago soon. yeah but I mean, uh, there's hope. There's hope, and hopefully we can we can get in the West. All right, I I remember doing this uh, a few podcasts ago, but we'll do it again. At what at what years G Star was Lineage Eternal first announced or revealed? Let's say. If I remember, memories, I think it was 2010, but now I don't remember. I'll say 2010 as well. Matt, you? I forgot because I think we did mention this. Do, 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 do. I feel like it was 2011. Boom. All right, so so that's it. on the money, 2011. I feel like that was a looked up answer, wasn't it? No. Someone's was cheating. He knew? He knew? Oh, man. I knew. I knew because it was mentioned on last podcast. Somebody listens to me. <laughs> surprisingly, See, man, it's not, it's surprisingly, it's Matt. <laughs> man, you just have the best attention of anyone here. That's, that's really what it comes down to. All right. Alta, I think you should bring up your uh, wonderful art article about bots in MMOs, neural nets. Let's get let's let, let's get let's get complicated, all right? Let's let's lose bots. let's lose our viewers. Go on, bring us there. I mean, okay, I, this is just another topic I talked about last time. Uh, basically, imagine you're playing a game, and you know you don't really even in an MRPG, unless you're you know dungeoning with someone, or even then, basically, you don't always interact with someone long enough to know. Uh, for sure, if they're actually there or not, right? Like, you might just see them running past you in town, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, talking to an NPC in town. Now, imagine if uh, um, neural nets and AI got far enough advanced where they're not conscious, right? They're not like, they, don't, they can't speak to you and fool you, right? But they can basically play the game. They can play different roles, like the hunter, the, the mob guy, the, the ganker. He just attacks you in the woods, you know. Uh, basically, a world where 50% of the players are actually just bots. But they're you know clever bots that, that run you know a certain loop. Uh, would you would let's, you let's mind that? Though, Aaron. Hmm? They're not just bots running a loop. They're bots that are indistinguishable from players. I don't want to say indistinguishable because one that's too far away, and two, mm -hmm. uh, they don't really have to be to kind of fool you with immersion. Because if you see someone hunting monsters in like the first level of a dungeon and you and you're going to level two, you're not going to talk to them. You're just going to run past them. And if, as long as you see them, you know, kind of acting like a player. You know, you'll you'll feel good. Like this place is populated, this game is popping, and that's all you really need. You don't have to really talk to them for half an hour to figure out whether they're a player or not. All right, L let's be real. Let's be real. If 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 like eighty percent of the players you've ever seen in an MMO were bots, you wouldn't know because you don't interact with them to a point where you can yeah. test if they're bots. I mean, like, think about every game you've played. Like the only time you can actually test if they're a bot is if you're queuing dungeons with them and they're acting like mega retarded, right? Because a lot, a lot of those basic queued up dungeons can be done with bots anyway. And the, the only way we tell if they were mega retarded. In which case, I might have been playing with some bots in FF14 earlier because people kept wiping in the easiest dungeons. But like, you don't really interact with people to the point where they, they could easily be bots. So, I think, actually, like, it, it might be a great thing for games because a lot of older games like, and emptier games benefit a lot by just having like, a, a fake player base almost. Because even if it's like, if, as long as you don't know it's fake and you fool yourself, You'll enjoy the game more if you see other people in it. Because I do think you'll enjoy... Like, it's it's easier to enjoy a game with other people even if you don't know, you know they're bots. Especially if you don't know if they're bots. So, I mean, we can all think of examples. Players. Like, imagine there's like a new... Okay, and then say there's a newbie bot, right, in a dungeon. And it's getting killed by mobs. And you, like, heal it or you help him. He'll be like, thanks, your name. And then it'll it'll remember you. So, like, maybe in a week later, he'll help you out, you know, if he sees you. <laughs> 
But but anyway, there's, there's, bot, like there's, like there's a lot of poss- yells at you. yeah, there's asshole bots, ganker bots, whatever. But the bigger question is, would you guys think this would cheapen the game, uh, or are you fine with it, or is it actually positive? Like, me, I think it's a positive. I guess it depends how they did it. I think it'd be a positive, almost almost entirely. If as long as it's you know, it, it adds to the experience having more, more interactions. Even if they're like fake interactions, it's still it's still positive. I think. If the boss is role playing assholes who go through the entire zone, pull all the mobs and AOE them all, then no, it wouldn't be a positive. There might be one bot that does that. I think, and like there might, I think there'd be a lot more normal like humanoid acting bots. Yeah, the the the, the distribution would match the player and distribution between like. You know, PvPers, PVEers, the you know the pro players, whatever the trainers. So, I, I think you guys are assigning like too many specifics right now. It it would really depend how they did it. it that's all I gotta say. Well, I mean, it obviously, it would depend how it's how it's done. But I think I think overall, the having bots almost re- like not replace but complement players would be great. I think it would be great for games that are on the downcline. Mm-hmm. Imagine a game's population is hurting, and then you can create bots that replicate other players, especially if that game is dependent on other players. But I think the more interesting idea, and I know why or how why you chose um, AI acting as players, because it's actually feasible. I would rather see extremely complex AI NPCs, things that kind of live like a full life. I don't know how the hell you'd go about doing that. At least with other players, they can they can learn from player actions. But I would love to see a game where, kind of like what Black Desert does, and I think that's why, even despite any bad coverage Black Desert gets, I, I always advocate for it because it really does give you that immersive quality through its villages and its NPCs on their little tracks. If you if you had a whole world where each NPC kind of followed its own schedule, and it was an AI bot, and it, it didn't just repeat itself on the same, you know, roller coaster track again. And again. It, it would be so fascinating and so cool. It, it would, I mean, that's that's a level you have to cross to create a truly immersive world. I mean, that's uncanny valley level stuff. But just in regards to players, I, I don't have an issue with it. The the question is, the, I think the more interesting question is this: How about this? Imagine you're playing a game, and um, every single other player, and you don't know it, is a bot. But they all behave like players. Is if, it still an MMO? Uh, if eventually you found out, not, not is it still an MMO, that's, that goes nowhere. But if you found out eventually, so you hit max on the end, you found out that you've been playing with bots this whole time, <laughs> would it cheapen the experience? And I don't think so. I think you want to say it would, but I don't think I care. I, I think, think it would. Funny. That revelation would cheapen it, but it wouldn't detract from the fun you already had. I think you might no. reconsider continuing to play it. Listen. I, I wouldn't be able to form a great raid party or go in Discord and talk to them, I guess. So I just <laughs> linked something to you guys that you guys reminded me of. Yeah, I'm reading this right now. Basically, Unreal Tournament bots appear more human than humans. So Unreal oh. you know, shoot, fight, you know, shooting games are, uh, are, I guess, are simpler than MMOs, so I guess the bots are more advanced here. And it's an interesting point. <coughs> when we play games like this, right, where there's Counter-Strike, Unreal... No, that, that's not the Unreal bots. They specifically coded a bot for Unreal. Right, right. Okay. Okay, and then yeah. yeah, this this coded bot apparently. You know, and, and I was just saying, like when you play the pre-made bots in Unreal, you can tell they're bots, right? They don't move mm-hmm. like players. So imagine playing, you know, a shooting game where you got people, you know, bunny hopping. You got them, you know, kind of going like this, like like a player would. So and it's a lot easier to fool people in shooters because you know they're not as advanced mm-hmm. as uh, the attractions are limited. MMOs, yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is, and it doesn't say it in that article. Um. These bots could actually like go after players in a revenge-like manner, and that's why they're convincing, because they coded them in a way that they appear to show emotion and yeah. like hatred for specific players. I mean, I'm sure the hatred thing plays a role, but I think just movement is also important. Like in a shooting game like Unreal, the way the the way a player moves kind of tells me right away if they're bot or not. Listen, listen, I want to go back to Gumby's question. All right. If you, if everyone was in, if you got the max level, you play a more RPG for a hundred hours, right? And your max level, you played for hundred five hundred hours, and you find out that everyone in that game was actually an advanced bot, and there was no actual players. That was a cheap new experience. I want to yes. go around the table. Yes. yes. I think she's gone. You guys go first. Okay, I say yes, and here's why. It's like saying this: Imagine you bought the Mona Lisa. You hang it above okay. your desk. 
And you're like, yeah, I got the Mona Lisa. And every day you walk by, you're like, yeah, it's mine. And guess what? <laughs> a year later, someone tells you, oh, by the way, dude, that's fake. I drew that. Like, I, I made a copy. But, but why is it you fake? You know what's funny, Erhan? Why Actually, are the bots fake? Oh, I want to bring this up because, Erhan, I thought about that today. And I, I thought to myself, if I was told that I had the Mona Lisa, I would still value it just as I did before. Because what, what you're saying at that point in that specific example is that somehow... Uh, the ego comes into play for its values. So, like the idea that the original artist created it is what imbues it with uh, with its value, rather than just the the work of art existing for itself, just for the just like the game existing for itself. So, I think it still has just equal value, unless you unless you're all about fanning your own ego that somehow you got well, the original. So, are you out. saying? You would prefer that you would no, I'm not saying appreciate I would it. I never or... said prefer. No, no, I never no, no. Say prefer. Ho hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. You're missing me off. So are you saying you would prefer that you felt no different or would you actually feel no different? It's one of those I things think, where I want to, well, okay. I'm awesome. I, I want to be on a diet. I own the Mona Lisa's. How am I going to know? But I, I, I would like to think that in that moment, mm -hmm. when I thought about it reasonably, I would say it doesn't matter that th this artwork, it, it's intrinsic value. It still exists. It's just as valuable as it was before. Who, who cares? It, it's, it, okay. If someone can recreate the same thing, you know, stroke for stroke, game for game or, or whatever, uh, it still has the same value. They still had to go about the the creation process. It's not like there's okay. some extra value. But, but they don't have the same value. But, but, like a perfect fake that's worth the same as a. Okay, okay but we're also missing that. we're all we're also missing a key part of this analogy hmm. that doesn't work, right? Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't work. You're right. When when you're in an MMO, like you can either a play all the way f through for free, so all you've lost is your time. And we all know, even if time is money, people value their time differently than their money. Um, okay. B, when you do pay for things in an MMO. You're paying for like a specific item. You're not paying for the player interaction. You're, you're paying for a specific item. So nope. when you say that the well, Mona Lisa was right, fake, right, wrong. if I buy no, an item, I'm not. That, that, you buy you a are, specific you know item. Yes, I am like a, a mega but anyway, pro in a game. Let you talk to the whole server is literally made for player interaction. You okay, bought a but player you're, you're interaction a item. You're cherry picking a specific example. Okay, that, that's the problem. You're cherry picking a specific example. Okay, and this isn't a specific yeah, okay, example. Sure. Yes, it is a specific example. That, anyways, you when you buy the right. Mona Lisa and you find out it's fake, you're literally not getting your value, the money value for it. Like, it, it's literally not worth what you paid for it. Yes, that's true. It's a fake. It's, it, it's sure, a, but yeah, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I was addressing that point, though. No, forget the, the, the money analogy. Is, you, you inherited it. It doesn't matter. The money part is not the equation. But it's okay. not worth what it was. You, there's no The resale value goes you, down. You, you had no plans of selling it. It doesn't matter. Oh, fine. <laughs> but uh, my point, I'm just trying to take the money part out of it. I don't know if you guys can okay, I, do the leaps in your mind. Well, how about but... this? Boy, boys, listen, listen. We're getting, we're getting too sidetracked, like a philosophy 101 class here in the one week. Let's bring it back to MMOs. Yes. Okay, with the me, bots. No, I got it. I got it. Let me do it. Boom. Let me connect it. Ready, guys? And don't argue by analogy. I'm not. Ready? This week, the game I played the most this week. You know what it was? Oh my God. Cookie Clicker. Cookie Clicker. This is a game where I've literally stared at the screen with like dead intention, right? Like dead focus. Like I can't wait till like, five more seconds to upgrade this. What all I had to do if I wanted to win or like get every, is literally change one little number in my cookie like file, right? My still my uh internal yeah, yeah. My, my, just for it. Or just, yeah, speed up it's your cheap. Basically, I can just give myself any any you know upgrade I want. Okay. But I haven't done that. I've actually stared and clicked on the golden cookies to pop up. Okay. So uh, okay, but what does that prove? It, oh, it proves that. What is with AI? Well, here's what you're saying. Like, imagine I spent a year playing this game, right? And then you came into my room okay. and said, "Oh, dude, bro, watch this." And you just open like the you know the cache and just change one number, and you match me after one second. Does that take okay. away the fun I had for a year playing the game? But th they're not the same thing. Okay, at all. okay. So yeah, here, let's let's go back to the bots thing. Okay, so if we make the bots I identical to players, right? So if I'm going through the game. And I'm getting beat in PvP. I'm getting beat in the race to mobs. I'm getting okay. beat when people on the market, like people buy something before okay. I can, right? If I find out at the end of the game that every one of those was a bot, okay. right? I'm going to be pretty mad because I'm going to feel like it was unfair from too. the beginning. On, but... Yeah, it could. But okay. if the bots are programmed to do it, it feels unfair automatically. What, no, no. what if the bots because are that's not what they advertise? No, what if the bots are programmed to do it at the exact same proportion that it would happen to you normally without the bots? And but you how realize, would they wait, know if there are no players? 
No, they base on other. They they study every other MMO. Don't go other... outside the example, right? Just yeah. just imagine it like it's, imagine it's like yeah. a, like your typical. Okay, here. Yeah. Let me rephrase. It's it's your typical experience playing any game. Just an average experience. Yeah. Everything is averaged out, and and you can't tell. But without any extra details, without any type of advertising, no one said whether they were bots or players. You just assumed it. It's it's totally totally average and abstract, and there's no specifics. At that point. At the point, would it would it devalue all the fun I had leveling if I no, really say enjoyed the experience? I don't think it, I think I it think Omar was said it originally. I don't think I would continue playing at that point, yes. maybe because at that but point when I hit a certain point, I want the human interaction. Okay, okay, Unless but... the boss could give me that, I wouldn't value it. If the boss could give me human interaction, talk to me on Discord and shit. Sure, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the same thing as like um, all those reviews that are negative after like four thousand hours. It doesn't devalue the fun you had then, mm -hmm. but it definitely like sours the memory. You know what I mean? Because you look back and you see these specific examples and you see why this happened, you know, and it's just kind of, it, it kind of sours the memory. It, uh, yeah, it like, that's a good point. Stuff. That's a good point. It can sour the memory. Like, like how real the bots feel, like, like Matt said in the end, like that's going to be the perception of most people is that it. I think you're both, I think, I think you're right. I think most people would feel that way. I don't think I would though. I don't think, I don't think I would draw a difference there. Would you guys feel that way if the bots were indistinguishable from humans? They, they could That's talk what we already said, though. We already said that. No, they, 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 they talk to you on Discord. Well, then, you're, then, then they're basically alive, aren't they? So No, no, but, 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 they, but you still find out they're all bots, and they're very clever bots. But they still talk to you on Discord. They, they all have unique personalities. Uh, I think we're getting unrealistic at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, 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 no, no shit. It, it is unrealistic, but does it still devalue the experience? I'm curious where you guys stand. Will this no. still leave you a sour taste in your mouth? Well, you, mean, you, you know for a fact they're bots. They're very clever bots. I'd feel very, like, weird. I yeah. guess it, I'd we're, feel we're, very lonely all of a sudden. I would feel honored. I would yeah, feel like, so it'd be honored. Cool. Because that would mean that I was the Turing test, and they yeah. fooled me. And they're told, and to me, at that point, to me, they're alive. Who cares? So then I'd be like, all right, I have, I'm friends with AI. That's awesome. This, yeah, is, right? like, this is, like, all of a sudden a, a question of, like, can robots ever become people? And have souls. This is like some... Listen, it'd be the point so is, cool. yeah. Sim and Jimbro, everyone's a Cylon, so it doesn't matter. Everyone's a Cylon, but you're all simulations boy. anyway. Okay, uh, be... look, the, the human, no, look, you, you, it'll feel different. And I'll give you an example why. Imagine in the future, there's concerts. You can go to like your favorite Justin Bieber concert, right? Mm -hmm. Live concert. <laughs> good example. Good example. Uh, let's say it's in New York, right? But you live in San Francisco. But in every city, including San Francisco, you can go to an exact concert, live stream at the exact same time, and there's a, a, either a laser or mannequin version of him, but it's indistinguishable, given the same concert. The tickets for the actual one will be worth more and sell for more. What if they were clones? Like, literally the same physiological makeup. Okay, even then, the original <laughs> will sell for more, would it not? I don't think so. I do. How, do, how would you tell which is the original? Yeah, but does that mean it should? You're, you're using an... an uh an example of economics rather than an actual value judgment because i don't think that an economic judgment always reflects the correct value judgment so so would it actually be valued more it would or not i don't think so I, if, as long as i'm at the concert if the music's the same i don't give a fuck and that uh, is the music the same. The don't the go to the concert singing. just stay home and listen to the music no, on the radio no that's not true have you ever been to a concert concerts have a, a far higher fidelity of sound that, that's why you go to concerts so you can get the highest quality in your face sound it's the same person, the same biology. It's a clone, let's say, of the person. Not, not, a, not a mannequin. It's a clone. That they, okay. we, we, we're in the Wait, future, are you, are you doubting the tickets for the original would be worth more? No. Wait, will your experience be different? No, you, you would have the same experience. You just literally the so same you can't, clone. But that's subjective. You can't go into the guy's brain. You don't know what's going on in his experience. Fine. They, they scan his brain and they but, scan his whole body and all and the cells I, in the same exact I, No, no, no. My experience, knowing it's real or fake, will be different. All right, the point is this, boys. We're, we're getting way up the beaten trails. Yep. Yep. But yep. I'm going to take us. Speaking of clones, let's bring it back to gaming. All right? All right, nice. let's do it. And I got to take a leak, so I'm going to leave this with you. We had an interesting discussion yesterday about Lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. We were curious. Lawbreakers is a upcoming FPS under the direction of Cliff Blzinski, if that's how you say it, who I believe is responsible for Gears of War. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, where is it? Um, so Wait, I think why doesn't someone pick up Matt? I think Matt should start. Matt had a chance to go to the studio and play the game with the team. I'm going to leave the video here of Matt playing because it's nice and smooth. Uh, maybe just give a brief overview and then discuss what's going on. What's going on? What's going All right, so basically, on? uh, right. So Lawbreakers, when I went to 
So basically the what's going on part of it is why haven't we heard anything since Alpha uh, three months ago? Three months ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. anyways, when I went there, what all they had, all they had was this one map that had to be connected directly to the server and it would automatically connect you. You'd go on the computer, you'd start up the application, it would come up full screen, you would put in your like tag that you wanted mm -hmm. and it would automatically connect you to the server with the other players. And depending on which side you were on, you were automatically on a team. Okay, so you automatically did all of that. And it's just this one really polished map in four classes. That is all there was, there was nothing else. There was no server browser, nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the time that it took them from then to alpha, they put in one map, they put in a server browser and some other stuff. And I mean, mm -hmm. and th the thing that's important to realize is that Lawbreakers has been in development for, I think, two years now. But at some point, they looked at Overwatch and the other games and they went, OK, we're going to completely redesign the way this game is because it looks too much like the other ones. And they went for more of a gritty feel like um cliff blazinski is known for you know with cures of war and all that like a more realistic tone than they did with the cartoony feel well what i gather is going on because based on estimates that i was given when i was there because they said like a character right it takes about two weeks for it to go through the entire like mm -hmm. concept process and like another two weeks for them to get the um two or three weeks for them to get the art done and all of that and it the overall a character could take a month or two character this one character from implementation to making the art and all of that so okay the fact that they're disappeared and they're in heavy development right now and they're silent it doesn't surprise me like there was basically not a whole lot of content there and even when the alpha came out there were two modes there were two maps, the same four classes, and they've had another class that they've been working on that they hinted at, and I got a few details about when I was there. It's in the article. Um, they've been working on that since I went there, and they've probably trashed it like six times by now, to be honest. But um, It's been five months, Matt, since the alpha, by the way. The alpha that was public. The public it alpha. Was, it, so. was in, it ended in August, didn't it? It started in June. I, I have a video up as of June. So since my video, it's been five months. Okay. So it over ended in August. Months. And over the course of Alpha, they added an extra map. And it, Hold it up. started That's with the one got. map and the one map. Okay. That's it. This is an Unreal Engine game, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, made by the guy who made Unreal, right? No. The designer of Unreal Tournament. What? But he... So no. he, he is building a game... Exactly like Unreal Tournament, on an engine for which he worked. Uh, the company he worked for the company that made the engine as a designer for the game that he's basically trying to make a new you, version. You do of. realize yeah. that the original Unreal Engine and Unreal Four are not the same thing. And that <sighs> yes, Cliff I get Blazinski that. But it's, hasn't been at Epic for a while. Okay, but the same that kind is of game. Completely unrealistic. He it's it. not irrelevant. This is not a. This, my point is, this is not a. This guy knows game design, right? This guy knows the game project life cycle. There is no mm -hmm. reason. That it would take five months from the public test. Oh, by the way, anytime it's a public test, it's a beta, open beta in my eyes. If if it's open to the public, you know, and it's on like a Steam, it was on a Steam, or it was on a Steam. It's yeah. on Steam. It's open beta. I don't care what they call it, alpha, clip, beta, data, diamond, omega, whatever. Okay, if it's on Steam and anyone can play it, it's an open beta. Okay, That's, I agree with that. Okay, I, I, it's been five months since open beta. Okay, and we haven't seen, we haven't heard much. Open alpha. Open, open beta. Alpha. Anyway. <laughs> So Anyways, <laughs> it's not been five months. Like I said, it ended in August. I don't care what, when it started is what matters. Okay. okay, when it started. Now, here's the they point. added content over Alpha, though, so therefore sure. invalidating your point. No, Listen, I, I, I played the game on June of, 20, of 2016. It's been eight months since I played it. Now here's, what do we got? What do okay. we got? Let, let, me, let me tell my theory. So uh, Matt's theory okay, was they got two maps, and it takes them six months to work on another map. That, that's Matt's theory. Let me tell you my theory. Um, All right. They released. They were working on this game. Overwatch came out, rocked the charts. Battleborn came out and got slaughtered. Got cut up by Overwatch. No room. Dead. Okay. Nice. They you guys do realize that the alpha ended two and a half months after Overwatch came out. Yes. They put it out there. Everyone who played it was like, "This is basically laggy Overwatch." And now they're <laughs> they're too scared to release this game uh, at this time. 
They want to wait till either the Overwatch hype kind of dies down. They want to maybe make it free. Maybe they're making it free to play because they realize they can't get people to pay for this when, when Overwatch is 20 bucks now. So they want to maybe they're retooling it with a cash shop. I don't know exactly, but they know they can't stand head. They can't. They can't go to the showdown with Overwatch, right? You know, the high noon. Not just Overwatch, Battlefield One, Call of Duty. There's a lot of like shooter games that just came out. Yeah, so a lot no of reasons they're coming out. A lot out of now. you know, buy to play, you know, retail shooters are out right mm -hmm. now. Gonna get drowned. Exactly. It's yeah. A, the, it tried to find an opening after Overwatch, but then all these other shooters came out. Now it's got to wait some more. Uh, their only hope, I think, is go free to play. And have we have we heard anything from them in like months? Like, has, has been the radio quiet from them? Because I'm looking at the Steam forums and people are saying, like, there's been nothing. That's never a good sign when it's basically, like, radio silence. Well, they're right. going to the Game Awards. So, basically what happened was, after Alpha and Alpha, they wrapped up the Alpha test in August 13th. The last post they posted was, Lawbreakers is at the Game Awards. And that was, like, two days ago? So, they did post that they were at the Game Awards. What kind of Game Awards for a game that didn't even come out yet? What's the deal with that? Well, maybe they were just invited to... To sit in the audience, I think. I don't think you have to have a game in the running to go to the Game Awards. I can, think can, I, can I? Can I? Can Emu's.com be in the Game Awards? <laughs> we'll go and seduce somebody, then we can go. I don't know. You know, they explicitly right. from a free to play model to a buy to play. They're not going back. They okay. did, right? Yeah. So the game, when it was originally announced, let me just clarify. So, I'm, so we're all in the same It page. was free to play. Free to play. And more. And then they transitioned away from it to, to be a buy to play model because that's what they expect the market wants. But, uh, but also important, when they announced that it went buy to play, they said mm -hmm. they were making it less like Overwatch. They explicitly said less like Overwatch. I do remember that, yeah. No, wait, hold so, on. So, Matt, did you talk about, because I was in the bathroom, did you talk about when you played it? Did it feel... Yeah. So when I look at well, gameplay, no, when no, I look I at this, I think of something that looks like more like an un, like a Unreal Tournament or a Quake or something where it's like a big deathmatch arena. Because I think, I think the comparisons... Aaron, I'm sure you said, I think the comparisons to Overwatch... For someone who's in the gaming community, involved in the industry, who plays games, they're not going to make that direct comparison because then you might as well compare any FPS with any other. And to me, this looks more like a, a deathmatch arena game. I don't know if you can. I mean, if you're watching the Assassin gameplay, just watch how much faster it looks. Like it, it looks really fast paced. Like you're swinging all over the place. It's a deathmatch arena. the The classes aren't as important. Your team build isn't that important. Every class has a, like chance to kill another class i mean it's not like if you don't have a tank you're not gonna win if you it, it in fact higher populations of like assassins in the battery capture thing actually helps because they're all faster so i mean it but that, you that's could correct. also lose because of that i mean it's just it's it's not overwatch it's it is more like the hero shooter version of a real tournament it, it really isn't overwatch and I mean, I, I keep trying to push that, but it's it's not sinking in. All right, I'll make a prediction. As a buy to play buy to play game, Lovebirds, I will bet you my left kidney, not the right one, the left one, that it's gonna flop. I am like ninety eight percent sure. Let me ask this. you this, because you said that a lot. Do you think there's a price point where it could do well? Because my opinion on yeah, yeah, Battleborn, yeah, yeah. I think Battleborn priced itself out of the market, and that was yeah, zero problem. is the price point. Zero. No, no. I mean, you know I mean, at I mean, that point, if you're if you're considering like how low can you go, I mean, you might as well just go free at that point and like yeah, yeah. So you guys, you guys, tell me you don't think okay, you don't think so, that the market would pay any price to play a game? I, I think thirty dollars it would do moderately well. And what? Twenty dollars is where it would really do well. Overwatch costs twenty dollars. Oh, what's like twenty dollars now? Doesn't isn't it? cost twenty dollars. It's on sale. Okay, whatever. Sure. That means it's twenty dollars. <laughs> so it's for sale for twenty dollars. <laughs> Just like this game no, would be. Back to sixty. For back to sixty. It's back to sixty. I know. So well, put, put it this way: if if you. Forty, forty. Sorry, sorry, Jesus. Forty. If you actually wanna wanna not be like, you know, just some throwaway game like. You need to go free at this point. I mean, Overwatch is like too commanding in the sense that, like, mm -hmm. if you were like, "Hey, should I plop down money for this, or should I plop down money for Overwatch, which all my friends are already playing?" Right? See, that's the thing. Though I disagree with you. Everyone I know that played Overwatch is done. Most people that I know that played Overwatch, they're all they've all checked out. I mean, we're back in every now and then. I mean, they're waiting for the new content, right? Once no, they're not my content, not the people I know. And at the mean... same time, this isn't trying to capture Overwatch's market. It is okay. trying to capture Overwatch's market like Tribes is trying to capture Overwatch's market. No. They're not the same game. They're the same game. They're the same concept. It's the same like like type of game. Guys, like, 
It isn't kinda, though. Kinda, it is. It's the same constellation of games. Tribes is class based same too. Same constellation. Listen, it's a key constellation. I think Shu it's a hero offers shooter. a unique perspective here. Hero shooter, Listen, baby. I think Shu offers a unique perspective here because I think she was absent in our previous lawbreaker discussions. I don't think she's ever played it either. And I think she, she plays a lot of FPS, by the way. She played a shit ton of CSGO. I played CSGO as well, but she put it easily, t put in 10 times more hours than I did. And I think she played more Overwatch than I did as well. So she plays a lot of FPS. So having played, no, having, you generally enjoy FPS <laughs> games. So you see yourself paying for Lawbreakers. You see the trailer on the Steam page. What I, do you I think? Don't, I don't Would think you I pay? Could, I don't think I could justify it, like, especially in the, the current set of games. I mean, there's so many, like, like I, I don't know if I want to say good, but there's so many FPS games that everyone else is playing right now. It's so saturated that like you can't really like go, especially at 30. Like that's ridiculous. Like like I don't think you could sell it at 30 at all. Like right now. I mean, maybe if you wait for a period where people are are thirsty, you know. But <laughs> well, it may be that way naturally by development. That I mean that that would have to be the play I mean there. But but what I'm saying is like you know we're having this conversation of like how low can lawbreakers go, right? I mean, why, I mean, why go down to like 10 when you could just go all the way and then reap the benefits of being well, free, to play? free to play has a lot of benefits. Okay, as far but, as like... but, but we're having that conversation, but that doesn't mean that anyone else is. Hold up. Hold but also, up. keep in mind, let me, let me just throw this in there before what? we get carried. Remember, Shu, when you do go free to play, right? To be yeah. successful, you have to have a viable free to play monetization mod. And we've talked about this before. It's not always easy. There's not always a clear yeah, path. That's true. That's true. So I think that, that always... sometimes you have to decide at the outset, do I want to be free to play or not? Because you have to start uh, putting resources towards a free to play, how you're going to go about monetizing it from the beginning. Well, I suppose and... another question to be asked is uh, what's their, what's their end game here? Are they, are they playing for the, the short con? Are they like, they're like short hey, con. Yeah, they, they the boom, short in con. Out con. boom, are they in. Playing, are they playing the short con? Are they like, you know, here, take, you know, Take the money and then and then not, you know, we'll kind of feel the waters out and we'll see if we can do anything with it. But all we need is that upfront money, right? Are they if confident? That's the, yeah. If that's what they're playing, then then I can see I can see them going for you know a, a price point. But I, I feel like if they want to play, you know, the end game, the end game for an FPS, it's like I, I feel like that's when you need to really consider free to play, right? If, if, like I said, if they, if their goal is to just sell x amount of copies and get get you know gtfo then then doing a lower price point could work in my opinion okay here's what i want to know okay um whose uh theory is more believable here that you got a guy who's got experience with unreal specifically in this and this genre okay going off between five months between the public test public steam uh test Till now, basically radio silent. They're, yes, they're still going to events, right? But they're not posting. No, the one event post came out just a few days ago. Before that, radio I, silent. I think you guys are still missing the point that experience with Unreal Engine One is not experience with Unreal Engine Four. It literally is irrelevant. No. He's a designer. It is so for, irrelevant. For one of the most like prestigious games ever. No, like, so are, are you, are you, forget it's being prestigious. Saying... Forget it's being prestigious. It's literally this kind Skill, of game. Experience. Are you then yeah. saying that Star Citizen has like a no <laughs> you know a chance i mean did, did, did you see what i'm saying here it's like it's it's, it's the same thing oh, no, really. no, but, but i don't how doubt do you justify the five months experience. uh of no progress <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say matt because said they're trying to real add alpha it was a real, it was alpha. A real alpha you can't have a public steam level alpha and call it a real alpha no real alpha is a family and friends the people that work in the studio they test the game that's what an alpha is the moment everyone can play it it's not an alpha I mean, yeah, they can maybe, call it whatever they know, want. We don't know. We don't know. They they could they could have some, uh, they could have stuff, but we just don't know yet, right? They they could mm -hmm. be hiding it for some whatever reason. I mean, we we Ain't know nobody that nobody gonna pay for this. Ain't nobody gonna pay for this. All right. <laughs> I, I think they realize that. Costs money. Nobody would play it. Pay, people play Paladins because it's a free alternative to other stuff. But if Pal imagine Paladins cost money, who's gonna line up to pay for it? The game is successful because it was free. Uh, yeah, apparently, my, my God. you know, online, it says 2017 is the release, um, uh, year. They cut, they missed this mm -hmm. holiday season, obviously. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's just, and also, by the way, from here on, it's only aging, right? So, you know, these, these FPS games have a pretty short half-life these days. They're going to have to compete with the next batch of games next year. Uh, and they'll be behind mm -hmm. by then. So it doesn't seem good. 
I hope it goes free to play. I'll, I'll give it an earnest, you know, play playthrough then. But I ain't, I, me, I ain't paying. Maybe, I don't think Gummy's gonna pay either. I don't think Aaron's gonna pay. I'm like, 80% sure she's not gonna pay. No. Matt and, might. But, Matt's I, I, on the I'm table. The one I had a lot of fun with it. Right. I okay. still, I still think you're biased by your first impressions with the performance issues, but it, okay. it was really smooth okay. and fast. I have no bias. That was eight months I, ago, I, I, man. I not you. No bias. That was five, no, six Aaron, months ago. I'm talking to man. Okay. okay. I bet. Imagine you have to wait another 12 months from here, okay, for the release. Is that... Yeah, well, I'm different. I forget things exist. They better <laughs> have a fucking Loli but... and a mech if they want me to play. But that's the thing. <laughs> they want this, me to play. <laughs> this game, right? I followed this game on Twitter. I, I kind of heard about it. I read about it, like, months ago, right? Now it's off my radar. It took too long. Like, I, it's gone. Like, the interest is gone. There's so many other things going on in the world. Like, wh why should I keep following this? I think you're all being... Besides me, I think you're being overly uh harsh. I also uh, think we could have said the same thing about Final Fantasy 15. Ten years in development. Oh, there are a bunch of other games. We could have just played them. Well, I agree. That's why I'm over it. I don't. It doesn't. I'm not that interested. Yeah, I, I, don't I, think, I don't think. I don't think Lawbreakers has had its day yet. I think that we've seen some also, moderate. I think, I think we, yeah. But we mentioned ahead, it a few ahead. times. It's a no-name franchise, right? And and for a no-name franchise to charge money. It's not a franchise. With, fine. It's a no-name game. Whereas you have you have other major franchises like. Anytime a so, Call of Duty game comes out, it's got it, it's got a, a reputation you're, of like you're creating what? you're creating comparisons between Goliath and oh um, my you God. know and, 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 and whatever some some village boy it, it doesn't matter I don't think I, I don't think it, it matters whether or not to the compare game, to Call of Duty assumed to be decent all right unless proven otherwise Here, right? here's here's what they're banking on and I'll tell you right now and this is what I think okay. they believe that there is still a player base out there who relishes the days of Unreal Tournament and Quake and stuff. And I was a big fan of those games. And I liked those games. In fact, when I made my Doom multiplayer video, I was very disappointed it wasn't more like those games. I missed those days. And I think that mm -hmm. if that core audience still exists, and I don't know if it does, and I don't think any of us here, maybe Matt does, but I don't think you guys know if it does either because it's not the people we generally associate with. But if that player base still exists, then the game will do just fine. There is no other game that's trying to do what they're doing right now. So they're playing into a niche, and I think they can survive that niche is there. Because most games now are all about, uh, they're all about cooperation, and this is a generalized statement. They're all about cooperation, teamwork, and then they're also hero-based. This is just hero-based, but it plays much more like a deathmatch from what I can tell. Play so Unreal I, Tournament is free. The brand new one's free, too. The new Unreal Tournament, we played it, was a, was a joke. It was a no, joke no. display for sure. the Unreal Engine. I don't know. I haven't looked at Unreal Tournament in a while, but based on what I saw back then, it was a, it was a joke. If it hasn't, if it's still the same, then it's not even a contender. Okay. Actually, I'll look it up right now, but, but at least it's free. Right? At least, at By least the I way, tried it because it's free. Unreal Engine, Unreal Tournament, right? The new one is on the same engine as this game, right? Sure. Okay. Now, Amar, you and it's taking longer. Engine. It's taking longer. Yeah. Thanks. Because they're, Actually, it's like free like, development. That's why they're not even developing it. They're like letting the community develop it or something. But these, it, it's free too. That's a thing. It's free. I can play for free. I don't pay anything to try it. Remember yeah. though, the the perception of free to play. You you keep pushing free, but the perception of free to play in general is is not great. People, no, I mean, the, it's it's not the great. Vocal, it's, the vocal minority says ah, sure, play, but they guess what? They all the play. Vocal minority it's free. says everything's. What's your point? Yeah, yeah, the vocal minority is always. But the thing is, vocal minorities are what sets the the or what sets the things in motion. Is what sets the perception because they're the only ones speaking. If if no one, if the if the majority doesn't speak, how do you know what their opinion is? You don't. You, you're just assuming at that point. Looking at Unreal Tournament, they have a few maps now. Five, it looks like. But all right, no all right. guys, we got we got we got to seize the discussion away. Speaking of games sure. that are potentially dead on arrival, who knows? We got we got to take a moment of silence. For Panya. Oh no, right. yeah, Panya. Panya. Um, where's my lighter? Hold on. All right, oh, take wow. the get the lighter shutting out. Down? Panya is shutting down, sure. Oh my god. Uh, December twelfth, twenty sixteen. Sad it's, day. It's been a sad day indeed. It's been running since two thousand and five. So it's one of the had a long life. Had a long it, life. It had, it had a long and fruitful life, you know. It, it grew up, it made friends, it got married, it divorced. And now it's killing itself, right? Uh, the traditional life cycle. <laughs> the traditional life cycle. But uh, yeah, rest in peace. I, has, has, everyone, has anyone here played Ponya? I have played Ponya. And in fact, it was one of the first free-to-play games I played. Yep. Back in an era when free-to-play games were the you know minority, the you know extreme mm -hmm. minority. Uh, it's a game 
I wasn't. I never really sunk too many hours into it, but I I downloaded, installed, and played it on multiple occasions because it was always there. Mm-hmm. It was it was an easy game for friends to play who weren't like super gamers when they came over. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of like a it was kind of like a phone game before phones. <laughs> Actually, I think they they they're making a, a phone version. I think it's, it's does anybody know if uh, Eagle Fancy Golf is by the same people? Or is it, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're making Pongya Mobile. I'm not sure if Eagle Fancy Golf is that game though. Pongya would be a great mobile game. Yeah, I think so too. Golf seems like a, in general, like a good mobile game because it's just like two bars that you're setting up there. Played this so long ago. The golf games are fun. Yeah, I, I, golf games are underappreciated. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a Pongya Mobile, so there is some hope for uh, for the franchise, and there's also hope beyond that. I mean, it, it might get picked up by the uh, our, our resident MO Necromancer, you know, Super Games or uh, Game and Game <laughs> Super or any of these. Games. <laughs> Red Suba Fox games. Game. I just imagine like like the entire Suba games like a uh, company building is just like there's like candles everywhere. There's like there's like pentagrams on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, 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 they're like floppy disks and CDs in the middle of the pentagram. <laughs> and there's so many home games. <laughs> Here's some uh, but... Pongya trivia. Do you guys know who did the music for Pongya? This is actually surprised me. No. Sound temp. Really? Is that really? Yeah, Granado, Espada, and Aro. Um, nice. And also, do we say how old Pongya is? I mean, Pongya's a fucking old game. 2004 in Korea, yeah. 2004 yeah. in Korea, yeah. Albatross 18 before it was Pongya. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Pongya lasted more than some games released in 2016, which <laughs> turned around, like, released, and two months later <laughs> shut down. I mean, we see... I, actually, that's a good article. Because we've seen that more than two times at least i think three or four so yeah it's a little ridiculous but pongya pong has been around pongya almost got his driver's license unlike someone but not quite you can't get your driver's license at age like 16 like age 11. it was close you could have had a permit no oh that's right i forget what year it hold is. up Sorry. if they were if they lived in a rural town and had to help their yeah. parents farm they could get a tractor license that's oh, true. Is that true? There wow. you go. I didn't even know that, that was a thing, a tractor's license. It is. I, I had a kid sense. I had a kid in middle school. You, you had a kid? kid. Uh, wow, okay. Everyone, guys. Today I learned everyone's a father. I had, I, had a, I had a schoolmate in middle school who rode to school on a tractor on the road. What? Because he lives on a farm. <laughs> How, how have I not heard of this before? In New it's Jersey? Jersey? It was, yeah, in central Jersey. It was, it was Chester, New Jersey. Was, it was in Morris County. Those so those farms. Oh. Yeah, and his name was Brad. That's all I remember about him. It's but it's not that rural. <laughs> Brad in New Jersey. Tractor. New Jersey has farms, dude. I don't know how far south you've been. Chester, I'm. I feel like I've been to Chester. Morris County is a little. Wet. Oh, it doesn't matter. Forget it. But <laughs> probably, he probably played Pongya too, right? He probably played Pongya. He probably played Farmville all day. <laughs> yeah. Ira. Well, let's, I guess let's get through some more interesting shit. Yeah. I really wanted to touch on... Who is this? Right, Omer here on Mark Kern's new game. Um, we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just plow right through it. Mark Kern uh, is developing a new game called Ember, but he recently rebranded to M8. I guess we're bringing back Leet Speak, even though that seems to have died. And the most interesting part about the news, if, man, if you want to elaborate on this, is that uh, a nostalgia programmer was hired on to work with him. So... Maybe Mark Kern was just supporting Vanilla Series so he could get some of their programmers for his own project. I don't know. But anyway, um, that's happening. So, what is maybe. it? Tell me more about this. What is it? What's Ember? We don't know. Uh, it's all very conceptual still. It's, it's supposed uh, to be, I guess, the original vision of Firefall. Yeah, the original the vision idea. of Firefall. Whatever that was. On, which he goes on about at length in a blog post. And my joke is that it'll only happen if Mark Kern doesn't get distracted enough to create Firefall, except in a different fork. <laughs> Or buy a bus. Wait, there's literally nothing to go off of here. Like, there's nothing to go off of. No, it's there's just you, hard also you your logo and they got a new programmer. Okay, bada bing, bada bada. I I just I really want to talk about this. All right, the, go okay, on. go ahead. Okay, the the logo makes me cringe, and the reason it makes me cringe is because it says basically in there we have Japanese text in our logo because there are kaiju in our game. What's that, a kaiju? Apparently, what? the kaiju tie it enough to Japanese culture in his opinion. That they should have Japanese text in the logo. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Where, so what, like, is, I, is he a fucking like steampunk look or something? What is like? What is what is this supposed to be? I don't, I don't Sci-fi. That's 
No, see, that is a Wild West revolver. That's not a gear. It's a revolver. Now, All when right. you look down the oh. cartridge, oh my god, it is so cringy. <laughs> and I, I just... mean, whatever. I mean, he, we'll put it this way. On his Indiegogo, he only asked for, what, $5,000? How And he generous. got 23 So it's not like he went out and tried to raise, like, a million dollars. I don't know how you develop a game for $5,000, but... No, you God, don't. God bless. So... <laughs> Uh, it, I, I hope it happens, but I'll hold my breath for the next uh, five years, also, I guess. I don't is know. that like an eight instead of the yeah. C? Yes. Also, yes, oh my I God. laugh that they changed the name because of that game that they just put on stream. Because I remember when uh, that game came out, Sean goes to me, he's like, is this the game that Mark Kern was working was on? I'm yeah. like, no. Because what's interesting <laughs> is that he called the game Ember. I mean, this is just, you know, but someone else had already, I guess, you know, they already copyrighted it so or trademark i don't actually don't understand so i guess he should have luck that way so i guess that's why they actually changed the name you're right so it, anyway keep your hilarious. eyes peeled uh for right. m eater i'm calling it em dash eight er dead dead on arrival <laughs> <laughs> Never, no, not, it's not happening <laughs> and here's why. This we also well we didn't mention the best part right the server programmer from Mysterious that's been brought on as lead server programmer is going to be working on revolutionary, innovative technology that is inspired by a conversation Mark Curran once had with Gabe Newell. Wow. Because, a you machine know, that feeds you sandwiches. <laughs> yes, sorry, you know, sorry, Gabe. If, if you Google Mike Curran Firefall and read the Reddit threads that come out, this guy was basically a disaster, Firefall. He just yes. wasted like tens of millions of dollars, hundreds maybe, but millions of dollars. Gave us a disaster in the end. Uh, so if he's in charge, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, he, he he's proved he's uh they can't he can't he can't handle the responsibility. <laughs> well, this is and, a good I mean, transition point. Uh, unless you want to say one more thing. One, one more thing on this. If you look at the 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 Indiegogo page, it's funny because at least he's honest about one thing. You know, if you look at the the rewards on the right side, it says you know you you, you get the game. Uh, should it be made? So it says like for the fifty hundred dollar reward, you can, you can customize your own skin and game, you get your own design. Deliverable only if the final game is actually funded and shipped. And then you also get the final game for free. Should it actually be made? So he's even saying like if the if the game happens, I'll give it to you. Right? He's not saying you're gonna get it. He's saying <laughs> wow. straight up. If, if I actually get around to making this shit, you got it, boy. You know, he's not just guaranteeing it. So I can respect his honesty and transparency there. Okay. And That's what? Good, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but unlike. Uh... You also have to, on the other side, unlike people like Richard Garriott that could fund everything they wanted to, yes. this man that spent a ton of money couldn't even prove to us that he could put his own money into putting a website up. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, did you so, do the transition? I, I was going to say, cut so, I, go I ahead. have to soon because uh, something happened with my mom, mm -hmm. but um, that game that I backed, uh, the alpha came out, and I What's the name it. of the game, Shu? What's the name of the game? Magus. Remind the audience. Magus. Mm. I How played it. it. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's okay right now. It, it, it's, it's. Give it a week. You can say it sucks. It's Give it a week. You'll, you'll be done. <laughs> well, well, I mean, a lot of it, it, it's alpha. It's pretty much like the, you had to back it to a certain amount to get into the alpha. And uh, I, I got my mom in and uh, it's had a couple couple issues that they've addressed pretty quickly like uh, login issues and stuff but the the game actually has it has a lot more in it than i would have thought that they would have had so a lot of the main systems are already in the game so so there's hope there's hope for it on there you can actually right. walk around and the 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 um you know the augmented reality stuff is working you can walk around and like fight monsters in the world, right. cast spells, all that stuff is working. The gathering. Crafting. You got rose tinted glasses right now in your game because you're 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 in too deep <laughs> right now. You're in too deep. Give it a give it give it a couple weeks of clear thought and we'll I, see what I, you I, do. I'm, deep. Just, I'm just saying that that right. it came out like the alpha, like the, like yeah. as promised. It was, <laughs> I it will... was kind of weird because they were saying like once this campaign is over, the alpha will come out, and mm -hmm. that seems really soon. Like what the hell is it going to be? Like some shitty ass screen, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm just saying like what I'm used to. With it's functional, people. you're saying at least. Yeah, it it, it it's it's promising. I, they got something shoe, there. Shoe. That's good. In your defense, shoe for backing this game. I this is my litmus test for all things, beliefs, ideas, whatnot. Is if I hear about it in the wild, and I have heard about Magus in the wild. So. Oh yeah, tell me about it. 
I mean, I just like I just saw you know places I browse and people I talk to have brought it up. Uh, one of my friends is a Harry Potter fan, or you know, they they heard about it, so that tells me that there's some inertia behind this game. Uh, there's something there, yeah. Th that's, actually, that's interesting compared to other projects. I actually like like some there was like another player like in my area and like freaking dueled me and stuff, and then I <laughs> I, I declined because I I, don't, I I suck. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm sure you'll come back to dominate them eventually, as you as you tend to. Shoot. Oh well, we'll see. The the thing is, is like I don't want to get too invested since it's gonna get wiped. You know, it's, right, it's one of right. those things where like I like I'll play it hardcore when when it's out, and I got my wand. You know, any excuse I have that I can like you know be, beat you two out there and like have a <laughs> wand in public. Shoot. I'll take when you take your wand in public, you should run up to the enemy players and just like smash their head in with the wand and then take their phone and stomp on it. Now that's, <laughs> that's PvP. You know? Wait, so do you actually get a wand? I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, you you get the wand. It's not out yet. So right okay. now you use the, the app. So the way it works is there's like a, a magic circle on the screen and you actually have to draw out your spells. You can't just like click a button to be like magic missile. You have to like memorize the fucking motions for magic missile. And then you you when there's combat, like uh, you have a certain amount of slots per turn, and then you just draw the magic missile and it chews up the magic missile and then it fires it. <laughs> so, so when the wands come out, you won't need to draw it on your screen. You'll be able to use a wand, a physical wand, and like draw it in the air. Rather than. You know. I mean, it looks cool. Actually, not really. Imagine you walking around with the wand in real life, right? If you're yeah, above you the age asshole. of like twelve, you're gonna look I, so cringy. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm fine with that, though. That's... <laughs> She's okay with that. That's who I am. That's who I am. Listen, listen. listen. I, I, have a, I have a crowdfunding campaign that's going to blow your socks off, sure, all right? All right blow all right, your sure. socks off. Show it, it, it. Show it. It's a quick one. It's a quick... Wait, what is this segment called? What's this segment called? This segment is called the shitty Kickstarter of the week. We don't oh have it every week. All right. <laughs> and we have an excellent treat for you this time. It's a quickie. Altai, prepare, prepare yourself. And... And you know, show off the video for like ten seconds on the stream. Unmute it. I'm Zoom so excited. Bit. Unmute it. All right, here we go. Big oh, one. Actually, Unmute he doesn't it. appreciate it for a moment. Unmute point it. Out. Everybody's silent. All right. Omar doesn't tell us about this beforehand, so this is all. This is in Spanish. Plano Altirino. Is this the project? Did this guy kidnap my daughter? <laughs> does, he, does he want some money? Un financiamiento colectivo. Para la realización de videojuegos, las compañías han estado <laughs> entregando basura durante esta última generación de consolas. Han estado estafando y engañando. Okay, sure. He kidnapped, he kidnapped your daughter, and now you have to send them 500,000 Mexican dollars. Cometen una cosa y entregan otra. Nuestra primera no, for the record, it's 506,187 este Mexican dollars, right? Why is he in this hood and talking like this? Did you guys notice the little NES on the couch? I'm so confused, I don't get it. I think that's the point. Yeah, I think 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 I
and he doesn't understand how to make videos any other way. So he just made this. He just did what he knew, you know. He's been selling. He's been hustling drugs his whole life. So he just he just made a ransom video like he normally would on a on a Monday. That's actually a great explanation. I love it, Gummy. It was beautiful. Well said. I mean, there's no other explanation. This is this escapes all logic and reasoning. <laughs> Yeah, be funny. Right, this kind of reminds me of a potential Black Mirror episode uh, idea. So imagine this crowdfunding okay. site, and this guy like kidnaps like some someone who's hated right by the public, and then like based on the crowdfunding, like if you give, give five hundred dollars, this punishment happens to him. Like he gets like burned with Ooh. a lighter, you know. And everyone's you know the, the numbers are going up. It's going to charity or something. So everyone is kind of okay with it. Yada yada. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea for a Black Mirror episode. I like that. Go ahead, write this script and sell it to Charlie Brooker. Come on. All right, that was that, that was a shitty Kickstarter of the week. We kept it quick this week. I just I, the second I stumbled on the page, I had to stop. I watched it for like <laughs> five seconds. I saw that video and I was sold. This was there, there was nothing shittier this week than that. All right, that took the cake. So God bless whoever made that video. Someone, someone and watching I, zombies. So, so uh, I'm yeah. gonna let Sean talk a little bit about the zombie game that got shut down. Uh, oh, what's going on with okay. that? Okay. Okay, so did anyone else here play the War Z? I'm sure someone in the comments mm -hmm. did. Did any of you guys play War Z? Nope. I know sure did, but she's War gone. War Z was basically a clone Daisy back when the Daisy hype was real. It was, you know, it was full of bugs and hackers and whatnot. Uh, War Z is uh, the Brain Project, or at least most closely associated with a man named Sergei Titov, who has been the subject of a lot of hate over the years because basically the War Z after the movie World War Z came out, was forced to change its name to Infestation Survival Stories. Um, and then there were a bunch of different uh, you know, offshoots. One was Romero's Aftermath, mm -hmm. another was Shattered Skies. Uh, pretty much Infestation Survivor Stories and uh, after they're both now shutting down, the rights to the IP, which was the original War Z, was sold to another company, a third party studio, uh, who have now taken over uh, total development and relaunched the game as Infestation the New Z. So basically, we've had these War Z clones for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just won't die. Uh, the only game that's still under this original company that made this awful DayZ clone is Shattered Skies, which cost $20 and has an almost non existent player base. I actually think all these games were fine, if you don't mind hackers and uh, bullshit. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> bullshit, my favorite. it just goes to show like for some reason these games still do well and the new Z I think is actually moderately successful. Let's take a look. Basically, if you if you played these games uh, and infestation, the new Z is actually extremely successful, successful as of 21 minutes ago, it had 7,600 players uh, with a wow. 10,000 player peak. Basically, people are still hungry for these Daisy stylized games. And this company, this uh, Eastern European company, has been delivering them the whole time. But they've always been a bit subpar. And I know the reviews on Steam haven't been so nice. But it's just funny, it's kind of the end of an era. Uh, because War Z was the original Daisy clone, or at least the most prominent, was free to play. And after all these years, that original IP has finally been sold off to another company, which claims to have something called MLG Anti Cheat, which which is the biggest MLG MLG tier boys. MLG and it's literally tier. about the show. It's called MLG Anti Cheat, and it's total, <laughs> it's, that doesn't make any sense. But well, you, you know why they called it that? Probably because they used to make hacks. I, I bet you're right. <laughs> they made an anti cheat. I, I is, bet. Uh, man, I think you just know. I bet they used to make hacks. No, they did. Oh, they wait, did. they admitted that. Yeah, they did. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize. Oh, Pretty wow. Funny. They're fulfilling the stereotype of being the, the Eastern European slash Russian hackers. I like it. They used to make hacks for the War Z, actually. Oh, wow. I, I had a friend who used them. We had a lot of fun playing War Z because of that. <laughs> Basically, these games haven't... Every single iteration of these zombie clones from this company, they're the same game every single time. They just rebrand it as a new game, whether it's Infestation or it's Aftermath, which unfortunately has the Romero name <laughs> tied to it. I, I'm sorry, Romero's. You got duped. And, or Shattered Skies. They're the same damn game every single time. And they basically just relaunched it as soon as your other one lost interest. Well, I uh, hope... God. didn't uh, Aftermath have building, whereas the other ones didn't? Like they Yeah, but that's such like a small bullshit Yeah, era. but they did something. <laughs> they, they still use the same exact models, the same guns, the same, the same basic premise. Um, same engine. So... Fuck those games. I still like them, but fuck them. <laughs> you still like them, though. 
I love they're, it. They're just like garbage bullshit games you play on like a Thursday when you're bored and it, only on a Thursday though. Like, you can't do it on a Friday Don't or you Wednesday. Dare play it on any other day of the week. Fucking I think forbidden. My favorite, right? my, the only game I like in this genre so far has been um, the dinosaur one, Ark. That is the that is probably the least optimized out of all of them, but at oh least it's God. something different. It's different. It is, that game that game runs horrible on my computer. I tried installing it recently, and um, uh, I know they've added a lot of content, but the optimization is just not there. I mean, maybe maybe with the King the 1080 you can run it, but a game shouldn't need a 1080 to run on medium settings. That's true. I I remember that game being horribly unoptimized. It literally crashed my. Driver, one of yeah, I believe. Okay, okay. Dr- dr- dinosaurs are not easy to handle. Okay, you gotta. <laughs> you, you, gotta you need giant place. PCs to handle dinosaurs, all right? They're keeping it realistic. I can appreciate that. Uh, what, what other shitty news do we got this week? There's a big one, guys. The Riot Games, but we gotta hit it. Uh, this this is oh, the big news. Take it away. All right. Uh, Riot Games is close to a deal with the MLB to sell the LCS street rights for two hundred million dollars. For two years. The MLB. The yeah, real MLB. Is the, the, real MLB. the real MLB. The real MLB. Can we clarify no, no, this? MLG, MLB. MLG. Wait, wait. Yeah. So you MLB. mean the Major League Baseball. Baseball. Oh, yes. my God. He's going to be paying Riot Games $100 million a year for two years. A $20 million contract for the exclusive streaming rights to the LCS League, which is, I guess, the, their famous in-house league they've been running for a while. And that's the one where they actually have been paying player salaries. They've been kind of trying to reshape the sports market where players get paid directly by the company. So it's been a lost leader for Riot Games for a long time. They've said it straight up that they don't make money on esports. And now they're able to unload, they're able to get $200 million for the streaming rights. That's such big money. Like, for, I mean, obviously, League is still the biggest PC game in the world, but, and they made $1.6 billion last year. But to get $100 million on top of that is going to make their esports like, vastly profitable i mean there's there's no way they're gonna lose money now that they're getting this kind of kind of dough on it and i want to is this the tipping point for league sorry i want to i want to make sure everyone here understands what this means though this is an exclusive deal that mlb is paying for which means Mm -hmm. that the uh league tournaments the official ones which are the only big ones really lcs yeah lcs will not be on twitch or youtube unless mlb listen unless mlb chooses to put them there MLB yes. is buying the exclusive license for this content for two years. So and mm-hmm. and they get to decide what happens with it, whether they put it on TV. So you want to speculate? I, I'm going to speculate and say they will not put it on Twitch or YouTube. I would think the same thing. They're, they're probably going to make you uh, buy their subscription. Yeah, either they're going to put it on their own streaming service, their own app, their own site, their own whatever. But who's going to pay a subscription to watch this stuff? I mean, I, I love well, watching. I'm going to pay for it. it they may change their minds eventually, but I think they're going to try it at first. And no, they might not make you happen. pay for it. They'll just put it on their site for free. Yeah, you'll be able to watch it on their app or their site for free. Yeah. But here's my speculation. Here's the, here's the, it's going to be free to watch on medium quality, and they will sell HD subscriptions. I could see that. Okay. That I could see. That, I think that that seems more reasonable to me. That that That's going to be the route. And it, it's going to be weird to see, like, to, for, for people that are used to watching this stuff on Twitch and YouTube, to have to go on, like, MLB's website. Like... <gasps> It just seems odd, right? This is. It's... I wish. Okay, so there's something magical about Twitch. There's something magical about having that chat as you're watching. So, if they can replicate that, then I guess it won't be a big deal. People will eventually, you know, habituate. But if it's just like, um, if it's just a stream, I think it loses its the, the luster of watching an esport tournament as a stream. You know what I mean? Like when I watched the, when the election was going on, I don't mean to bring in politics, but when the election was going on, I wanted it to be on Twitch because Twitch chat makes everything better. Uh, I agree. I agree. So, so chat is a if they don't have that chat with that population that's attracted to Twitch, it just won't be as much fun to watch an eSport. To me, but maybe other people I, are different. I'm 100% with you. You're 100% accurate. <laughs> it's all about that chat. That chat, it, it really may enhance my experience. You guys in the chat, you're the, guy, you're the ones that make it. You guys. We you guys love you guys. Magic. I mean. Well, I'm not going to go that far. We gotta, we got, you got to think they have some kind of plan. So we'll, we'll have to see. I think. And again, the, the deal has not been announced yet. All we know, this is according to the LA Times. There, there was a long article on this, and multiple sources close to the matter said that this deal was very close to being inked. So this is a big tipping point for, for, I mean, for esports in general. I mean, to get 200 million, like this content was never like this valuable before. I guess MLB is willing to shell out 100 million dollars a year. For this, this this exclusive license is huge. 
I think somebody mentioned in the chat that this seems like a desperate move by MLB to get a, a younger audience. Yeah, possibly, because MLB, I think, is probably like the most the traditional sport that's like dying the most right now. I mean, basketball is still huge and football is still big. You know, football has been in some kind of decline. I think basketball is one of the fastest growing major sports still. But I think MLB has, and baseball in general, has been in decline in America for a while. So maybe this is just like a shot in the dark for them to try being relevant again. What do you guys think about that? I think. Wait, what did you, did you just say to make the MLB relevant? More relevant again. You know, they, 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 they are in decline. Are, are they? Decline. How much of a decline? Hold up. Who do you know who's like under fifty that cares about baseball? Uh, I know. I know my brother who's younger than me who loves baseball. In the U.S. And I know I other know people too, who like baseball. In so, the U.S., I'd be hard pressed, but I'm pretty sure it's still big in Japan. Oh, the whole all of Japan, the average person in Japan is fifty, so Japan's dead. Okay, listen. There's actually an article on Huffington Post from uh, in August. I think it's the average person that watches the the average age. The article points MLB viewers are the oldest of any sport, with fifty percent being over the age of fifty. Thank you. Fifty percent. Woo! Wow. Altai pull, nails it from his ass. ass. Woo! My, yeah, my yeah. ass. Pulled the ass, out of ass is the ass oracle. And it matched the it is the oracle. All right. <laughs> well, how does that stack up with other sports, say, like traditional American sports, like football? Actually, that, that, that is, that's not fair. Football's huge. Uh, I guess I got nothing. Never mind. I mean, I'm Golf. surprised you guys didn't know this, uh, Gumble and Matt. Maybe. I mean, I knew I knew baseball had an older demographic, but I didn't expect 50%. That's huge. That, that's more than far more than I expected. 50% of baseball viewers are 55 or older, actually. So you 41, think that, it was 41% 10 years ago. Not, you know. Are you saying that you think – I mean, that's not a huge difference, but you think this is mm-hmm. – I don't think this is a way for the MLB to make themselves relevant. This is just a way for MLB to get some of that eSports money. They want, they want to be in on the eSports deal early. No, no, there is no money. Uh, currently, not Th- yet, not yet. I understand they're planning for the future. Come on, no, hold on, hold on. The NBA is doing the same thing. No, what the what the MLB is doing is the, the MLB has connections with advertisers like Coca Cola, Red yes, Bull yeah. that that league Riot doesn't have. Okay, so they're paying upfront Riot. Here's a hundred million dollars a year. We think using our connections, we can monetize this audience better than you can. Right, and, and we have right, to. Right? We have to because all our old geezers watching Yankees are dying. All right. You know, they're, they're choking on those Cracker Jacks. Oh, man, I got my lifespan. <laughs> what age do you think you die at? <laughs> they're choking on Cracker Jacks? <laughs> they're choking on Cracker Jacks. <laughs> Everyone's trying to go by 45. Cracker Jacks are the you. signature old people food. Let's be real. Let's be real talk for a minute. All right, Cracker oh, Jacks are definitely old people food. Are you food. trying to say you don't like Cracker Jacks? I don't like Cracker Jacks. Nazi. <laughs> they still call the toys inside or like No, like they only come with like um, with diabetes, I used like. to get them as a kid. They come with like a little paper flap with like a sticker on the I'm pretty sure they come with those insulin testing kits, you know, the finger prick. <laughs> That's how I find out. I found out I'm not diabetic. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we went way off the rails here. Well, this this has been the podcast of digressions, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, since I, the beginning. Guys, NBA is the lowest. I think 50% of viewers are 37 or older. Yeah, I, I believe below that. that. So... When I look at people at school, everyone except for me liked the NBA. And there was like six other people. All right. Yo, Matt, Matt. So, sort of a digression, right? right but, go ahead. Please, keep the trend going. But if we can keep off of digressions for a second, we should run through all the release date announcements. Let's do it. Okay, go. go all right, so Ragnarok Online Mobile is coming out in China in March. Done. Boom, Ra- done. Lineage Revol- Lineage it's only Revolution. China, though. Don't get excited. It looks awesome, yeah, but it's China, China only. Okay, Lineage 2 Revolution is launching in South Korea on December 14th. That's the one by Netmarble that they are apparently launching so through the lawsuit. Um, <laughs> Bless Russia open beta is starting on December 8th. This doesn't say on the list, but um, you may or may not be able to play it without a VPN, but you will not have to pay for a Korean account, so that's something. Um, we don't know about the VPN yet because while it is not currently being serviced in america or anywhere else in europe but russia we do have the whole problem it's been announced here so they may still ip block it because it's been announced here Mm -hmm. um we also have worlds adrift early access it's been confirmed for the first quarter of next year and alpha 5 starts tomorrow and it's got a ton of new features so it's looking good for that um soul worker korea's first closed beta is coming sometime soon you're going to be able to 
like register for the Korean closed beta on December 1st, but we have no idea when the closed beta will actually be. Um, it, it is odd because it's already out in Japan, I guess, because of the anime aesthetic, they decided to launch it in Japan first as a test. This um, is the only game I've seen launch in an international market before its home market. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little it's odd. It's so weird. And they've had a publisher lined up since at least last year, I think. So it, it's been a while. I think, shit, I want to say Smilegate's publishing it in Korea, but I can't remember. And Southeast yeah. Asia. Mm -hmm. Um. Guardians of Ember is going to hit Steam Early Access on December 13th after being delayed for almost two months. Um, I don't know what happened with that, but Insul Games is a small publisher, so gods only know. Um, there's also Gigantic is finally entering open beta on December 8th alongside Bless Russia, and it will only be on Windows 10 and Xbox One at first. The Arc Games version will be coming out sometimes afterwards, but they have not set a date for that. So you'll only be able to play it through the Windows Store and the Xbox One Store. All right, um, Windows Store, Windows Store, real talk, real talk. Awful idea or awful idea? What do you guys think? No digressions. There's one more. No. <laughs> one more. After, after it's done. <laughs> All right. Okay, and then Durango is launching another limited beta on December 13th. You can sign up now. I did it earlier and immediately got a beta key, and they will send you the download link later. Cool. And that's it. Okay, right, go real ahead. Talk. Windows Store, really? What? Who has ever used the Windows Store in here? Let's... Well, I think it's funny that Gigantic, <laughs> even though they decide not to be Windows Store exclusive, is still doing these little like nods to the Windows Store, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, like, I, I've never used it, no. I've I know, Aaron, it... are you a staunch defender? I have used it once in my life, and it was literally like three hours ago. My wow. god, congratulations. Your Windows Store virginity, gone. My Heinen's still intact, but I'm going to try and find it now. Okay. There's I've really used no it reason twice. To, there's no reason to use it today, but I think mm -hmm. when Microsoft uh, needs to play the smart game here and subtly make it essential. Make make certain programs you can only get there. Start with utilities, not games or anything, right? Utilities, a calculator. Like, imagine Windows didn't come with the calculator, but as, when you type in calculator in the little search bar, it says, download now on Windows Store. So you gotta kind of get used to it. That's actually a really smart idea. It gets people used to it. Because if you just everyone would download if you say today, like you gotta, you know, you, if you want to use like whatever, you know, like 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 League of Legends, it's gotta be in Steam Store or Windows Store. No one's gonna do it, right? They'll be pissed off. But so you gotta you gotta you gotta get them addicted. All right, serious question. <laughs> go, if you go to the Windows Store right now, right on the homepage, if you scroll down, one of the most popular apps on the Windows Store is Facebook. What kind of asshole is going to download Facebook on the Windows Store? You can just go to Facebook.com. Why? Um, okay, here's why. There is a whole generation of people, uh, especially young people today, that grew up uh, using mobile first. Their phone was their f and tablet was their first gateway to Facebook. Or how about so, just Facebook first? Whatever. So now when they get a laptop to go to college, right, it's, or, or even high school or middle school, whatever, they get their first computer, they don't know what, like, they don't know you can go to Facebook.com. They just type in Facebook to, and, and download the app. The app is their That's first. That's weird, I think. What? On PC? I get it, I get it on mobile and tablets. Well, imagine you never use a PC. You only <laughs> use mobile. Now you got a PC. What are you going to do? <clears throat> it just seems odd. Especially because uh, I've never you know, used the, the store before. Yeah, I, I've only used it when I had, which was for Killer Instinct, uh, Gears of War 4, and I downloaded the trial for ReCore, which was kind of mediocre. I downloaded that a program only... that you have to use. Oh, I'll talk about that. Never mind. Just post game stuff. All right. Well, uh, that's that. Any other news for MMO related? I think we have to go to the post game soon. There's, there's, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to playing Conan Exiles. They got, they finally Shit, got a. Early I missed answer. that. Uh oh. I missed that. Yeah, there you uh, go. We're bringing it up really we didn't quick. even digress. We're going to touch it. I want to touch this one real quick because show off the trailer too because this is we finally have a release date for it. I do feel like they're a little late to the game. Okay, I mean everyone and the was release like date super... is January thirty first. He didn't say that. Yes, early access January thirty first, twenty seventeen. Early access for it'll be on Xbox One and PC. I think it's the PC version though right now. The Xbox One will come later, but I feel like they're a little bit late to the game because it's going to be almost like a like a Ark <laughs> slash Rust style survival. No, I think PvP you're wrong that way though. Game. Really? I think they're in a good position because those games are still popular mm -hmm. and people who are kind of bored of those want to gravitate towards a high quality survival game and this is the only one on the horizon. So I think it might be all right. Cool. 
It looks great, though. Look at the trailer. I mean, this looks top notch. There's no word on a business model just yet either, so who knows what it's going to cost? Buy I think it'll be buy to play. Buy to play. It's not what the price is going to be. It's going to be buy to play. Is it 100 percent? No. I bet 20 bucks. It's got the Alta guarantee. All right, you got the Alta guarantee. They, 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 they haven't said the page. They haven't decided. Yeah, they haven't said it, but it's 100 yeah. percent going to be. Buy -to -play. Uh, there's a lot of cinematic bullshit in this trailer. I gotta say. I gotta say though, this this genre works better for the Conan world than an MMORPG did IMO. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Did anyone else actually hate Age of Conan's combat? Like I the did. whole directional crap? It was confusing. I I, I thought it was Dude, okay. This, this giant Greek statue stomping through is pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> I hope it's actually in the statue? game. Apparently they uh, reused a lot of assets from Conan, Age of Conan online mm -hmm. in this game. So You're Good. They can save money. Let them. They need, they need to save as, as, as much money as they can. The... <laughs> Funcom is, you know, has been having issues. This trailer makes it look very nice, and I think as long as oh it my... has enough features that are different than other survival games, it can do okay. Shit, I never watched this, so I just saw the guy have to jump back from the tree. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they'll crush you if they fall on you? So. Holy That'd shit. Cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Dude, this giant statue is fighting the snake. If that's just a dumb cinematic event, I'll be kind of mad. Okay, but listen, whatever it is, right, at least this world seems so much cooler and more engaging than the average survival zombie game. I'm so... Yes. Can you point out why that is? Because most games just have the dumb premise of having the undead. Or even that, no, it, the or other players. Undead is fine. Like, you get, you can have vampires and some cool shit going on. But the problem vampires is, zombies undead, are just easy. What? Zombies are undead. Yeah. I mean, vampires are undead. But we never even seen a... a, a, a right, go finish your point. Yeah, my point is, the reason that everyone chooses zombies is because, like... It's the most generic. There's no no thought AI like just mob. You know, rush at you slowly. Yes. It's so easy to like and throw out in like a day. You know. Mm -hmm. And yet yeah. Daisy had them clipping into Bill. <laughs> still, Matt. Do you know? Still, that's what happens. They never fix that. You as can throw it out in a day unless you're Daisy's programmers. Thanks, Arma Three Engine. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I'll, I'll probably check it out. I think yep. probably most of us will. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. I mean, I love a nice survival game, so. And with that, let's take it to the post game because we, are, game. we are over our allotted time and Sounds we'll have some fun in the post game for a Gucci. bit. Gucci. All right, guys, that's See it you for YouTube. this week. Take it Thanks easy. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Take care. Later, guys.